And the cams are sorting themselves out, and they are sorted out, looking crazy, but you guys can hear us, you're here with us, these will fix up in a second. Welcome to Dope Check Episode 8 with special guest, Ben J. Nassim. How you doing, brother? I'm doing doing good, you know. Ohio in the winter. I know people hate when I talk about the water off the intro. Right. <laughs> what the hell? Like, ben, how you get how you get that how you slow shit down right. that quickly, man? What do you mean? What do you mean? No, I want to know what you have to say, Ben. I'm, I'm fascinated. Tell us about Ohio, bro. Bro, bro, it's just depressing in the winter. I'm not gonna that's what I was gonna say. Like, so you gotta you gotta find the victories and you can get it. You know, I go for some walks, get a nice little coffee in the morning. No, I'm doing good. It was an interesting weekend of matches. There's obviously some stuff that happened during the week that I'm sure we'll get to as well. And I'm really excited actually this week because we got Challengers Elite coming back. So we're getting into the, the, the thick of things in the Call of Duty scene, and I'm excited for the months and the weeks ahead. Absolutely, absolutely. I'm excited as well, and I'm, I'm really happy to have you on. It's been a, our first guest on Dope Check, and one of the ones that I think uh, I've, wanted to, I've wanted you to come on and just have a conversation with you because you are a great conversationalist in this space. But, Rab, what's going on with you? Trey, what's going on with you guys? How, what's happening with you guys? I'm loving life at the moment. I'm going to have a real easy time today because... I just have to sit back, relax, and enjoy the show as you guys yap on the stratosphere. It's actually a good time to have Ben on the show as well after what we saw yesterday. Do you think, Trey? Everyone, yeah, no, I was actually going to start roasting straight away. But, yeah, it's going to be great. <laughs> Come on. Well, are we talking Come about the clip? Do we want to get right into it? Get right into it. Just, let's 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 okay. I, I wanna right, right, right. Let's, right, let's right, address the clip. Unfairly done by right, let's, let's, right, let's, 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 ben, let's, ben, I just want to. I, I just want to say that everyone told me to tell, ask about the clip. All right, because they know how me and you are as a, as a friendship. All right, oh, so yeah. let me just start off with, you know, that was crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, wait, wait! Talk about, talk about, talk about, We gotta, we, we gotta play the clip. Wait, wait, we gotta play the clip for everybody oh, who play, hasn't seen it. Play Let's on, play the clip on, for chat who no one's on. seen it. Um, it was tweeted out by Celium, and yeah. it was a very interesting clip. I can, I'm not gonna lie. Let's take a <laughs> quick, quick <laughs> gander. Of it. People watch this clip. Holy shit! Yeah, a lot of people watch this clip. Let's take a quick gander at it. We're about to go right side, bottom uh, What are you uh, doing? I'm gonna just go right side. Just trying to cut. Perfect stuff. Cut for you. Shut up. Yeah, tweaking. I probably said. <laughs> oh yeah, I forgot. I think they're just like... They hit him. him a couple times and stunned. What am I doing? Right? I'm just... One guy's in the sub. Let me see. Let me see. Uh, dude, I was okay, so... Benjay. What yeah. the hell was going on in this clip? Bro, was listen. this early in the game or something? What no, is going on? Like the first, it's the, listen, I found the VOD. It's the first week of the game. You know, we were running eight. I was like on like hour seven of a fucking stream. I actually didn't get fried on this map. I went back home and found the bottom of the clip. Listen, I was just off the Kentucky pack. It is what it is. <laughs> uh, I was obviously annoyed yesterday that MC, you know, tweeted out a, a clip with no context and didn't specify us from three months ago. But he apologized to me. It is what it is. Uh, the community obviously has, has said their piece. I will say that some individuals definitely have sent me some messages that are absolutely not okay. So not a fan of that. But uh, I'm glad that people got entertainment. And honestly, I told MC... I set a reminder on my phone. 30 days from now, I'm going to know and see what his revenue on X is, and he's sending me that check. I don't care. <laughs> it's 2.4 <laughs> like, million I'm, I'm views. I'm taking those funds, bro. I'm taking those funds. I don't give a fuck. Uh, I, MC, MC, $3.87 is going to hit different, I, huh? Yeah, no, I'm taking that money, dude. Hey, man, I respect hey. it. I respect it, honestly. I will say, you know, obviously there was extra parts of it that, you know, we won't get into because it's just a stupid thing to get into. Yeah um you know end of the day what i will say is joke or not joke you know everyone everyone you don't have to be a pro to have a good opinion on the game i think we can all agree with that you don't have to have been a professional at call of duty to know the game i feel like ben you've been a part of the scene you've been a manager you know you've seen everything scrim wise everything like that you kind of know how you kind of know how it works you know what i'm saying um so I think I I think we'll end that there. But you know a pretty you know shout out to you know Tommy Zuma for backing the beef. You know that was <laughs> that was some premium beef backing from Tommy. I will I will admit. Yeah, um, that's why it's my duo right there. Exactly. That was a good work out of him. But yeah, I mean we addressed it. That's that's pretty much the clip as a whole. It, it, 
And the fact that it was so early on in the game, I think that's the out of context part. Cause a lot of people are assuming this was you like on a stream yesterday I or something like that. I got in my hand, bro. They shit got G'd by like P3. Brother, like, that's why I was even, I was that's why I was tweaking even more. Yeah, I saw yeah, that yeah. shit used. I was like, bro, are you still using this shit somehow? Like what is hap What is this clip yeah, right yeah, now? I got some insight, bro. No, no, no. It's from a long time ago. Okay, so yeah. The bands are good entertainment. Shout out to everybody that watched it, I guess. Yeah, that it was some good entertainment. It was definitely funny for the day, but uh, man, we got a lot of other stuff to talk about, and, and I'm glad you're on with us today and, and here to address it as well pretty early. But let's jump into it, man. Uh, we have, I know a lot of conversations happened about this topic, but it would be wrong of us not to just chit chat about it the uh, Hex Scump lawsuit, right? Um, Rab, I know you've made a jillion dollars in the last few days when this came out, so. Out of, out of all your research and everything you've done, what's your reaction to it? What have you figured out? What have you found out? Uh, give us your, your highlighted facts and your thoughts on this one. Yeah, it was bloody hell. Like, waking up that day was crazy because I checked the Reddit as I usually do to see what was going on. And I saw Rodriguez versus CDL. And I'd just woken up. So I was like, who the fuck is Rodriguez? Like, what's going on here? <laughs> and then it clicked that it was Hex. And, uh, and then I scrolled down and saw all the shit that had happened. I think the interesting, like, the, the day that the CDL and Activision got sued over something Franchise League related was inevitable, I think, based on whatever the hell they put in that pitch deck that never came to be a reality. We don't know all the details. I think what surprises me, though, is that it's not... I don't know what you think about this, Ben, because I think a lot of the topics on this have been not beaten yeah. into the ground exactly, but I think there's, there's still a bit of nuance to the subject, like... Because Nachok commented on it and pretty much said that he seemed as blindsided by this as the rest of us did in a way. Like, it didn't seem like Nade had been... Because maybe my perception would have been that Hex would have done this with Optic, which is also not true. Envy have said, you know, Envy aren't getting involved. None of the other teams are getting involved, apart from as co-conspirators, involuntary co-conspirators, whatever they're written up as. Um, and Nadeshot says, sure, he'll support the guys, but he's not part of the process, which, which did surprise me because, you know, I expected if anything like this was going to happen, it would be kind of like what happened in the Overwatch League when all the teams came together, as far as I understand, and basically said, all right, pay us some money to disappear type thing. Um, what's your perspective on this, Ben, from, like, from that angle? So I think it's interesting. One is... I assume the reason that other owners probably didn't know about the suit is that um, if there were communications between, you know, Hector and Seth with other owners about their issues as outlined, you know, um, by the causes of action and the damages that they're seeking in the lawsuit, those conversations will come up in a deposition and discovery. So, like, I think their hands are kind of tied in that, in that standpoint because they're not in a shared defense with each other. And therefore, those aren't like privileged conversations. That's one. The second thing is I think it probably comes down to the, the ownership structure of Optic. And the fact of the matter is that if there is any future settlement in regards to CDL, and it seems like per the lawsuit, you know, after the OWL, around the OWL thing, there was conversation on the CDL side about, you know, um, liability in regards to Activision and sort of future proofing or discussing any future settlements or buyouts. And the team sound, sound like the teams agreed some stuff conditional on like, if you don't, you can't host events. Let's call that in the lawsuit. Um, but I think in particular, like, you know, Hector's ownership within Optic makes it such that, that Optic uh, wouldn't be a part of this because Optic, you know, Hector wouldn't see any of that settlement money and therefore he's seeking additional damages. I think the, the crux of the suit is obviously both Seth and Hector, because of the, the nature of franchising, the process of franchising, the subsequent rules around what's been put into CDL have costed them, you know, economic duress. Yeah. Um, we had a chance, I mean... I have it up on the screen now a little bit more about these uh, this lawsuit. And again, if you want to see the specific terms on there, uh, there's a copy of the case filing with a little bit more of a breakdown on there for any of the, any of the anyone watching. Um, but, you know, my reaction to this is it's I feel like it's more a morality issue, like like someone doing bad business versus an actual legal precedent for them to go ahead and, and, and file this. Definitely, there's a lot of attention that they're trying to get, in, in my opinion here, especially attaching scump onto this as well. Um, I think Hex knew what he was doing. It's kind of like gathering that community support and kind of using, you know, utilizing himself and Scump to make this a really um, bombastic public PR move against the CDL, against, or excuse me, against Activision. Um, 
but you know, we spoke to a lawyer, me, me and Trey had a chance to sit down with uh, Ina, who's a, a lawyer from a pretty big firm. And she kind of stated that the case didn't have much grounds, unfortunately. Um, I don't know. To me, it seems more like a PR move and maybe something to force Activision's hand and get more attention over uh, to the to kind of the internals of the CDL and what's kind of happening with these teams. Maybe some more stuff comes out as this develops. But the lawyer was saying she would be shocked if it even got to trial. She thinks it's going to be dismissed. So it's really interesting to see where this goes and what direction this all takes. So uh, I, from my understanding, as far as federal civil cases, which is filed in, in U.S. federal court, mm -hmm. the percentage of those cases that ever get to trial is a very low number. Right. I don't know the exact number, but it's, it's extremely low. Usually they're either dismissed or they're settled um, in court or out of court or whatever. And so I've spoken to a couple of lawyers, a couple of lawyers reached out uh, in the intellectual property space, in the corporate sort of antitrust space and said, hey, like, want to make sure, because you guys are gamers, not lawyers, want to make sure you guys kind of aren't with the facts because you go on content and this is sort of how the lay of the land is. It's, you can have, the crux of it is this, you can have a monopoly, right? You can, you can own in a fair way the market. You just can't have an illegal market a monopoly as outlined by uh, the Sherman Act from the early 1900s as well as other applicable state laws that are very similar. Um, and it, the issue with this case is that unlike a lot of proposed illegal monopolies in cases like this, Activision owns the intellectual property rights of Call of Duty, and therefore they're afforded an extra set of rights as copyright holders and their ability to enforce their copyright. And so a, a judge may look at this case and say, well, your cause of action for an illegal monopoly are actually not really Activision enforcing a legal 100% monopoly. In fact, they're acting within their due rights as a, uh, an IP holder to the Call of Duty League, to the Call of Duty brand itself. So I think with this case, if, if Activision decides to force a dismiss and it, it happens, it's going to be tough for Scum and Hex to get any kind of settlement here. I do think if it gets past that bar dismissal, though, from the people I've talked to, discovery in this case, right? Discovery the process of both sides gathering information, putting people under oath and taking depositions with transcripts and video. That information that will come out in the production of that, as well as supporting documents, may be extremely damaging to Activision and, and the other teams and other parties. And at that point, you know, there may be a settlement in this case. Hmm. I guess that would be my question as well is like, because at the end of the day, as much as I'd like Hex and Scump to get the dub or whatever the case is in this, yeah. you know, in this situation, <sighs> The amount of money in Hex and Scump's bank account doesn't really affect my life at the end of the day. What I'm really interested in is does this affect the community in a positive way? Because that was, I think, a big debate in the first 24 hours of the case. It's like, okay, how much is Hex? Let's say mainly Hex, because I think most of the damages are probably going his way if this is, you know, to be, if the numbers were you look at from that perspective. About 660 you know, million are going to Hex, by the way. 660 million yeah, of okay. this is it, Hex's side, fair, 20 million is Scump's side. It, it, to be fair, that's their proposed numbers. Let's say a judge were to say, okay, you know, these, the, you know, all these counts are, as a judge, I'm giving you a summary judgment that, you know, in fact, I agree with the Scump and Hex side. We're going to go to trial and a jury's going to determine damages. They can obviously choose that number. So just to be fair, like, that's just what they're seeking. It may not be what they actually get if the case goes all the way to the full length. Yeah, it may not even be close to the number they actually get. The proposed number is actually, this may shock some people, and if you haven't heard this, it's close. It's actually $2 billion because it's triple the damages uh, you're supposed to get when you're doing these kind of lawsuits. So they're actually seeking about $2 billion. 680 is the proposed damages, uh, but $2 billion is what they're asking for in return. Um, yeah, what they're... I respect the balls on Hex, bro. Like, he honestly, say what you want about Hex, but... That's, you know, he yeah. swings it around, doesn't he? he, 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 he he's it. done it, man. I mean, he, I think the other thing, too, about this, I think the main, you know, we, we talked to a lawyer about this, her analysis of it, and honestly, if you look kind of the central theme of this entire uh, lawsuit, it's the fact that I think Hex feels a little bit, or no, a lot of, he feels a lot of bit slighted by the fact that he had to sell so much of Optic to Envy uh, in order to get himself a, a league spot and kind of continue the Optic brand. Um, he's only at this point, I believe, a 7.5% owner of Optic, and Envy now has 92.5%. He had to sell all that in order to get in the league. So I think, you know, especially now hearing the fact that Activision was considering, um, you know, getting rid of that $27.5 million, whatever, the $25, $27 million franchise fee and bringing that down to like 25 
if I was Hex, I'd be pissed too, right? The possibility that, oh, I could have got this team. I could have got into the league without any backing, without selling 92% of my brand. I would be losing full too and trying to get some settlement and some money back. And um, maybe even, I mean, this is kind of extreme, but maybe, maybe if he doesn't get a successful lawsuit against Activision, potentially turning this back to Envy and being like, yo, I want to, I want a chunk of my ownership back because, you know, if this thing, if this franchise fee does get reduced, it kind of sucks to lose out of 92% of what you built because of something that gets altered completely when you could have done it yourself the entire time. It's a really bad position to be in if you're Hex. And I understand where he's coming from. I think uh, in particular, I think it's actually almost bigger than that is because I agree with you. It even goes farther as back as the infinite situation because, you know, going into like 2018, 2019, when it was clear, you know, Optic had started to expand as a business, you know, they were in a couple of different games and they had in the Hector eyes on expansion, you know, they were seeking around the market to, you know, take the business to the next level. Um, and, uh, you know, in those prelim conversations, it seems like with Activision, it was clear to them that they weren't going to, if he were able to have a business, let's say do like a series a round and bring in a bunch of equity from VC firms, let's say four or five firms, a bunch of other people and still be the, like, you know, still have a good percentage of the business. They weren't going to let him fly. They wanted to partner with somebody. So he partnered with energy, right? Soul optic infinite took in that direction. He wanted to stay in the league in another business. So he went with Andy. Uh, energy and then that didn't work out and then it really goes into death what happens next when he goes to try and get the brand from ogla he gets a deal agree with the mortals um and then the league says hold up a second uh that's all fine and great but we have a right to ability to review this deal as far as the league spot goes and you've got to find a partner and they move the goalpost on him i I think that portion of the lawsuit is very damning especially the re how it recalls i mean the hector had had where they say that he's not the type of owner they want in the cdl which is insane because he's one of the forefathers of what we have here, not just in Call of Duty, but in esports in general. So again, on the discovery side, if Activision has to go to trial on this, and people that are within that meeting or acknowledge of the meeting or exchange emails of the meeting are going to have to confirm some of the supporting stuff around them, and it's not going to look great for Activision on that front. And so I really feel for Hector and Seth and them, and I'm, I'm pulling for them to at least get to that stage and be able to really present their case in a meaningful way here. I agree for sure. I think my question is, is this good for the community in the near term? Because whatever happens in court or whether it goes to that point, a question a lot of people have is like, okay, well, if Hex and Skump were to win, shall we say, I don't know if they would win, but if there's some sort of settlement agreed, does Activision say to its people, look how much effort all this esports bullshit is, like these guys keep messing us around. Let's not even bother putting any money into it anymore. And if Hex and Skunk were to lose, then what does that mean for Optic? What does that mean for? Like, I think, uh, you know, Rab, the, the demon, I, I, I've had this, this conversation has come up, not even just this, like in five or six different situations over the last like eight, 10 months. They were saying, like, what, we'll call you just unwind Cod Esports. There are enough people in high enough positions that within Activision, Microsoft, who are, you know, would see the upside of esports as a marketing exercise and they're willing to provide that capital. They have so much cash on hand, they're willing to spend the money on it. Obviously, the form in which that takes could change and be different. I don't think this lawsuit is going to change their stance on it. I don't think it's going to change their stance in regards to Optic because they can't just put up a, a no pun intended, like a, a brick wall uh, to Optic and say, you're just not going to be able to do any Microsoft or Activision thing post this agreement. Like they need those fan base. They need that fan base to engage. They spend money on the game. They buy copies. They buy merchandise. They buy MTX. They can't, they can't like cut those people off. So this is just what happens in a lot of industries. It's a big disagreement. People feel some type of way. And then, you know, people use all the remedies possible. In the case of this, and you bring up the statement right now, you know, Hector and Seth sent a letter to Activision, classic case, to try and set up the lawsuit, say, you know, pay us or we're going go to go to court. Activision and Microsoft said, you know, take a hike. And so they filed the case and things will get settled the way they do in this process. It's been going, you know, that's why we have a court system. It's for shit like this. And there's hundreds of years of case law and procedure to be able to, allow these parties to work this out in a uh, ideally complete way. Yeah. What do you think, I was going to say, I was going to say that I said this when we spoke to the lawyer, but Hex and Scump, this is a win-win for them. They don't lose. Even if they lose, even if they lose the case, they still win because they've, they've got all the community backing them. Um, 
everyone already dislikes Activision as it is. So this just harms Activision even more. Even if the, even if Scump and Hex lose or nothing goes ahead or anything like that, everyone's still going to roast Activision. Um, I think the only thing it possibly hurts is probably Hex's future involvement in terms of how much Activision actually want to fuck with him after this. Um, and, you know, it probably hurts. That's why That's why the owners, uh, I assume, of the other teams didn't really want to get involved either because, one, this doesn't really affect them because they, uh, Hex's, Hex and Scum's, uh, Scum's, you know, what they've filed doesn't really... It doesn't have to say it, no one else has, has this problem. You know, everyone else has bought into the league or whatever, like paid for their spot. Whereas, you know, if you feel like Hex got, you know, he felt like he had to join someone else to get his spot back. Um, so, really, in that aspect, of course, no one else is going to help it because they don't really see that the CDO has really done anything or Activision's done anything wrong by him, whereas Hex does. Mm, I agree with you. I think even if they lose, they win. To an extent, because I think to your point, the community is going to back them, and if they win, obviously there's a financial uh, reward uh, at the end. Um, I just think, in general, uh, it's unfortunate for Seth and Hector that, regardless of whatever potential financial payout this the, you know comes through, it doesn't unwind what has happened the last five or six years, especially on regards to Hector. I think he's obviously made money off of. You know, let's be honest, he sold the brand twice. Um, and has made some coin off of that. And I'm sure as uh, this current position, even though he doesn't have full equity in the business, he's still probably making a decent amount of money off of uh, the business in the CEO role where he is just sitting atop the pyramid having to make some big decisions uh, about the business. Um, I just hope that, um, you know, in regards to the other teams, my guess is that because of current certain conversations that have happened, post the Overwatch League sort of situation, they don't, either they've signed away their ability to sue Activision and in terms of that specific party, or they don't want to. And on the Activision front, I thought this was interesting lawyers I talked to. There's a little bit of a bind here for Activision because if they settle with Hector and Seth in a number of different ways, there are avenues for the other teams to then also try and file a lawsuit if it validates the antitrust claims in here. So it is a bit of a difficult situation if Activision does not get the case dismissed. And now they land the plane without having um, to give up uh, significant sums of money in settlement as a public company. It is, it is a very tricky one for sure. My, my, my point about that is though, is that so that that uh, article came out last year about the CDO waiving the buy-in fee for the, for the league. Um, if everyone decided to take Activision to court, Activision could just say, oh, you haven't, you haven't paid the buy-in fee. Here, you know, you know, you all owe us 25 mil. Enjoy. So I feel like you got to look at it that way because, like you said, Hex and Scump haven't bought Optic into this. It's just them two. Yeah. yeah. Um. So they 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 won't owe Activision twenty five mil. The the majority, you know, uh, you know, Envy will owe Activision twenty five mil. So I think it's like I said. I think it's very obviously they see like they've been you know, hard done by, and we're dealing with Scump and Hex, you know, the fa Hex, the founding father and Scump, who is pretty much the face of Cod Esports. So, Absolutely, yeah. Uh, I, I kind of want to address the Scump's part as well, too, like specifically his part in the lawsuit. Uh, it ties back to a player summit several years ago when he, he claims that he was, you know, he was considered to be signing a contract without lawyers present. Um, it ties in back to that and then additional advertisement law, like advertisements that he wanted to get that Activision blocked him from uh, accepting. Specifically, the community was in uproar about the signing of a contract at a player summit. Um, and some claims were being made that, oh, he he was under duress or, you know, he he was being forced to. Per the lawyer's conversation, plus even just traditional thought, um, if he didn't want to sign that contract, it doesn't it doesn't work under a duress law. All that would have happened is Activision wasn't saying, "Oh, you can't play at all in CDL." It just he wouldn't be able to play at Minnesota at the time. Um, so I actually, in my opinion, I don't think Scump actually has a case at all. Hex is the one with a real case against Activision, not in the trust stuff, but in the potential discrimination and uh, in the discovery phase with the internals of the CDL Activision kind of conspiring against him. I think he Hex has a bit of uh, promise to his lawsuit. Scump has 
no real basis. And that's why I say I think he was brought on for more attention, more support. And the bump to the Optic guys has been clear recently. Obviously, this PR has been positive for them. If you go to Pred's stream, if you go to the Scump Watch Party, if you go to everything else, all the Optic guys have had a huge bump from this move. So, you know, uh, I'll, I'll take – I think Hex and, and Scump kind of knew what they're doing. They're taking this – Potential W with the W's that come from the PR battle that they're winning with this legal battle. So on the Seth front, what was explained to me is that you can't, it is very difficult to prove if you were forced to sign a contract under duress. Um, the easiest way is obviously if you have like written communication that is clear as day that this was sent from this party and say threatening violence against you, threatening uh, economic penalties. The problem is, I think what happened here from talking to players, and I know Trey, you were there, this happened in a meeting. There were a lot of people in the room. And what's going to happen is there was nothing in written communication, and those people were going to be in a deposition with that far and not be able to recall the conversation. So it's going to be a little bit difficult for Scum and Hector to kind of give the full accounting enough that a jury would be able to actually find that, you know, he was forced to sign that contract under duress. Exactly. Exactly. And again, you know, he, uh, I want to ask one uh, more thing before I throw it up to Trey. Yeah, Trey, go, go. Trey was at that player summit, so we should 100% get yeah. Trey's thoughts on what exactly happened there. But I do want to say it is not considered duress if they say you just can't play here. They didn't say we're banning you completely. So him signing that contract, he had a choice to not sign the contract. He literally had a full, full choice. So that's why it doesn't fall under the claim that he's trying to make uh, that – you know, it was the rest or it was an illegal signing or it was forced his hand. It's sign and play or sign and don't play at this one event. So, Trey, what? yeah, Trey, I want to throw it over to you. Like, what was that player summit like? Was there anything over there that you felt was a little odd? I mean, like I said, we're dealing with scump here, you know, comparing it to everyone else in the league. There's no comparison, really and truthfully. Uh, I mean, you had like Krim, Clay formal but still no comparison they don't even come close to what scum does or for the league for for anything like that um so me personally i well i can't play at minnesota fuck it i'll sign it i don't care <laughs> I, 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 just, I just i just want to compete you know but for scum it is much different he has to look at what he's going to lose he has to look at what he's going to gain um he has to look to see if anything yeah if anything's going to affect him what he can and can't do and I think the issue is, is that when they say, you know, you can't play or something like that, he's instantly, you know, like A says, you're not banned from competing, but he's looking at it as like, oh shit, if I don't sign this, then my team's going to be without one. So I'm just going to sign it, whatever. I don't feel like that's being forced to sign it. That's just the ultimatum. Mm. The ultimatum is don't sign it. You can't play at this event. But obviously he's sitting there thinking as a compare. You know, as so, as a teammate to his team, I need to sign this to play. Really and truthfully, you know, they should allow him, they should allow a lawyer to look it up or at least send it to, they should have sent the contract to people's emails prior so someone could look at it. But I think they also want every player to have the same player agreement, the same contract. So no one feels like, so the lesser people don't feel like they're getting, you know, wrong, dumb, uh, hard done by just because they're not on Scump's level. So uh, forced no but felt forced yes okay uh i think let's jump over to the uh what the, the lawyers what she said exactly about the clip about this case and stuff let's 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 watch that clip really quick and see you know chat how do you guys feel how do we feel about it um yeah we had her on a few days ago me and trey boy were were talking to her and we also have the main points of the case here so let's let's listen to this really quick and see what we think up the volume for people watching right now too like there's just a, some targeted questions i think a lot of people have and i have a targeted question of like something of this magnitude and size like, again if we're looking at this uh this breakdown that we have on the screen you know the treble amount they want is over two billion dollars right um yeah, yeah. what is the, how long does it typically take for something like this to be settled or this case to conclude? I mean, this case, okay, like I'm just gonna like give you my like legal like perspective. This case is so like meritless that uh, any good law firm would get this dismissed. Like just, you know, what you would do like procedurally is 
you wouldn't even respond. Well, you'd file a motion, what we call a motion to just saying that these claims have no merit, right? Because this is what this law requires. You know, the Sherman Act requires, you know, price fixing. And you can't, you also can't monopolize something that you own. It's your property. Mm, okay. Uh, so like, these are very straightforward, like legal issues. Again, like this lawsuit is more, is intended more for shock value. And the like the antitrust claims, the like Sherman Act claims are, are not very colorable, but like the antitrust act allows you to triple the damages. So if they have, if they're already claiming, you know, whatever, um, a million, multiply that by three, and now it goes to like $2 billion, right? And you have a news story that says like Hex is suing Activision for $2 billion. That's like a, a bigger headline. Right. And hmm. What's, I mean... And the reaction, any good law firm would get this dismissed. It's for shock value. Um, and they're doing this, you know, to, to put the headline out. What's the reaction? So a couple of things. I know people are getting annoyed at lawyers that say like. My dad, who's a finance lawyer, complains that all of his associates say a lot of like, like, like. So I think this is kind of how it is these days. She makes a good point, right? You have to, you have to define a market for an illegal monopoly or any monopoly in general. And it's very difficult in this case because Activision owns the rights. And therefore, like competitive Call of Duty, not necessarily, not necessarily a market. The market might be bigger in esports, but they're a rights holder of Call of Duty, and they're afforded extra rights. So again, on the dismissal front, um, that barrier might be too difficult for Scum and Hector to get over. But if they do get over, the case becomes very interesting because we've never seen a case like this, from my understanding, litigated uh, as far as esports and antitrust stuff. I think another thing that we don't know, and I'd wonder, is if Scum and Hector, if anybody at Activision is willing to go in a deposition and provide documents and provide tests to uh, testify that you know stuff was being done in bad faith here especially by activision the point you mentioned earlier about the additional hamburg terms that the players had to agree to um you know in minnesota if they have someone that can testify and say hey there were three or four months of conversation leading up to this that you know we said one thing to the players but we're actually going to do another that might be grounds to actually Prove that they signed a, a void contract. So, uh, we'll, well, again, the key thing is can come and have to get over the barrier of dismissal here. If they can, this case is going to get extremely interesting because discovery is going to tag in a lot of people, including team owners. There's a whole section here we haven't talked to about MLG. So, very outspoken people in the esports world that were around that transaction, such as Sundance uh, and Mike Sepso may get dragged into this. Like, it, it can be very interesting as far as all the parties that will uh, have to speak in this one. Hmm. Can you bring up as well as the tweet from um, Grayson to Adam Adamu? Because I don't know if you've heard this, Ben, but from what I understand, the plan is that the CDO will still go on for at least another year. I don't think they're planning to wrap it up. Here we go. As far as I understand, I don't think they're planning to like wrap because that's been the point, right? The Overwatch League is now gone. They've moved back to a different system. It's going to happen with the CDL at some point. There's been the thought as to whether this is going to accelerate that, whether it's not going to have any impact. What Adam is saying here basically is that, you know, well, he talks about how they're doing all the events this year and he's talking about doing stuff in Europe soon, which is very exciting. But also what that says to me is that, okay, there's another year coming where we might, you know, they might do something in Europe, they might not. We'll see. That would be nice. But um, yeah, I don't know, because you talked the other day on the flank about the whole Saudi thing, the possibility of having champs in Riyadh. And I don't think that the boys gave you the time of day that that opinion deserved, frankly. Because, no, they were laughing at um, me. I was always about it. <laughs> but I don't think they understand. <laughs> I know you also look at it through, not maybe through like a golf lens, but I'm sure you've seen what's happened in the golfing world and in literally every other sport, and frankly, esports. Um, so I don't know what your feeling is about the CDL existing for one more year, and then uh, mm -hmm. things wrap up, and then we see. But so the, let's let's let me answer your question but let me back up for a second the difference between overwatch league and call of duty league the overwatch league system is was very complex because of they had teams in not adjacent regions not not usa you know north america europe it was north america and asia so once COVID hit it became very difficult for them to have these international competitions due to a lot of different things you know like uh the lack you know especially in some countries in asia it prevented People from coming from other countries for a significant amount of while through the, the period of COVID, it just became a very big issue. And Overwatch League, in particular, when we talk about English-speaking countries, 
had a huge problem with a lack of marketable stars. And you don't have that in Call of Duty. In the in the markets that Call of Duty is in and is popular, even in regards to competitive, there are big names who have brands who stream, who create, and they speak the language. So I just want to be that clear on that. Now let's talk about the future of Call of Duty League. Look, uh, uh, I don't know how to slice it for y'all. Like people are still watching this. People are still playing. Um, there's money here to be made. There's growth here to be made. People are attending events. The events sell out. So I think for Activision, you want to continue Call of Duty Esports. Now, what does the CDL look like next year or the year after? Does it become something else? I don't know. As far as uh, Activision, my guess is with the fact that they've laid off so many people that they're going to continue to vendor out and provide, have a third party do more and more functions of the things that their, their, AB, their Activision Blizzard Esports team was doing. And right now in, in esports production in North America and in Europe, there are really only two games in town as far as like, you know, full suite from, uh, you know, tournament organizing to running event production to running broadcast, it's PGL and there are smaller potatoes compared to ESL face it group, which is ESL face it, dream hack esports engine. And the esports engine team is the old, essentially the old MLG team that used to run call of duty back in the day. And they've been supporting, and I was a part of that. They've been supporting CDL in different ways since the first year uh, of the league. And it's only gotten more over time. They started just doing like challengers and some event production stuff. And now they're essentially doing most, most of everything. So what I expect is combo that with the fact that ESL face, group is now owned by savvy, the PIF basically in Saudi Arabia, where we're going to see some tie-in on that. There's some equity, there's some financing, there's a commercialization that that group can bring in via the investment because you know, their sovereign wealth fund is, I mean, Rab, I don't know how many zeros are in that fund. Let's just say that. Um, it's unlimited, so they can, bro. Unlimited. It, it, it's essentially unlimited, essentially yes. unlimited. Yes. Um, so I think that they are going to bring some investment in. Does the franchise model pivot to something else 18 months, 24 months from now? I'm not sure. From what I've heard, as always, there have been exploratory combos, you know, at the ownership level over what things look like long-term because they've never been settled as far as the format they've wanted to have. Um, and so we'll see if CDL continues next year, but I would say for two years, probably unlikely. Um, All right. And I am, I am curious next year, let's say, you know, the Abe team goes down from 12 people that I don't know, like four or five people, um, you know, it's gonna be hard to run their current format with that little amount of people on the first party side. So uh, I'm very curious and maybe they pivot to more of, you know, a halo where we have a halo where it's less about league matches and more about seating going into events. And we try and lean more on the event strategy over just trying to get broadcast hours via league matches. But I don't know what their KPIs are. The, when me, when me and Trey talked to the lawyer a little bit, we specifically asked this question if it was going to affect the CDL. And she made it pretty clear that the CDL has nothing essentially to do with this lawsuit at, at all. She was clarifying the fact that this is a personal lawsuit with Hex and Skump versus Activision and the CDL pretty much is not really part of it. The co-conspirator part is partially um, tagged with it, but like we talked about earlier, the antitrust part portion of this lawsuit is most is the highest likelihood to be tossed out. So the other the CDL is pretty much unaffected by this on a legal level. Um, in my opinion, yeah, the, the CDL is going to continue, keep going. Um, as far as we see the format now, the only thing I see personally going to switch it out is not going to be this lawsuit. It's going to be the uh, influence of Microsoft coming in and placing their desires onto the Call of Duty esports competitive side, right? They've done it before in other games. Why? That's my more my thought. What would stop them from doing that again here and making the league more efficient cost wise? As we're seeing now, a lot of people, you know, we saw the the uh, spectators be moved from permanent employees to now contractors per event, right? So there's continual cost saving that we see happening in the league now. And at this point, this is this is starting to become the Microsoft influence, not the Activision influence. Wait, wait, but hold on. They, to be fair, though. I don't know if you guys Google Activision Blizzard Esports layoffs, you'll find out that they've been laying people off almost twice a year for three or four years now. Like even before this merger, Activision has looked at the staff that was running this team. And, and I hate, listen, we don't want to see people lose their jobs. We want to see people lose their benefits. But even before this merger, Activision has been finding efficiencies with this team where they can. And it kind of sucks. Um, I'm just curious, again, 
what are the long, there are definitely teams that have come in and owners and I've, I've talked to him. We've, we've talked to him on stream, especially last year when we were going to events and, and a lot of them are ride or die on with this. I know some of my co-hosts on the flank think that people are just going to get out. There are, there are a number of teams that were not endemic to the scene now um, that have come in and they, they've seen the Adam Adam over here, who got a point mm -hmm. like, like they are, they are all in on this shit. Yeah. Um, whatever form it looks like. Um, but uh, I am just curious at some point if they, you know, I think what the fans will want, but what I think would work best for their business, what I think would work best for the fans and work best for growth is to pivot out of the franchise model, pivot into more of a partnership model where you still have the microtransaction upside, you still have the revenue share upside, you give more freedom to the teams to commercialize, less restrictions. Ideally, let's not sign an exclusive broadcast deal. Um, and, 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 you know, you have this sort of pathway now for other orgs to participate. A, a great example in Halo, right? This is like pure, like digital age, but I, you know, I love it. Look, look what went on with the early stages of Halo. I don't think Quadrant was any part of the original HCS partnership group conversation. But Lando Norris came in with his group, fielded a great team, were competitive at every event, and then Microsoft brought them to the table. Like that is, that is a process and what they should aspire to. And that way we have, you know, 12, 16 teams that want to be there instead of, and no offense to say the, the Vegas Legion, but they're, they're, they don't want to be here. You know, no offense. Like, like, he said, no, no offense. We know you're a hater, you man. Right I'm now. a hater too. <laughs> so, so, so that, that's, that's just my, my piece on it. I, I'm very curious to see if, listen, I don't think any owners are going to talk about the lawsuit. Obviously they don't want to, they don't want to stir the pot there, but at some point I right. think we'll get more news about whatever next season looks like. And I think there will be, there will be definite changes to the CDL. And by the way, I hope we get a fucking event in December this time around because that was a travesty this season. Especially if the game is out in October, January. which is what they say. Yeah, yeah no, that, like, come be, on. Yeah, come uh, on, bro. You know, yeah. Yeah. The, the, big, yeah. the, the biggest issue with, in my opinion, the CDL right now is how, how hard it is for anyone else to get a look in. Yeah. Uh, we, we've had, you know, we're on year five. We've had no expansion and there are teams that wanted to get in. There are teams that wanted to get involved. Um, and from from some of the articles that I read uh, over the years and from, you know, being a pro and what I heard, Activision blocked them. Um, so, you know, I, I don't know. Obviously, they know, I guess, they, you know, they could say they know best, but um, I'm sure having a 16-team CDL would be, you know, is what everyone wants to see, more expansion, better, you know, more players in the league and, uh, just a bit of just a bit, bit of difference really than what it has been and hopefully next year because obviously at cdl is like a five-year cycle but i don't see it going anywhere next year based on you know adam's tweet and just how it is obviously if they wanted it to blow up i feel like this would be a perfect time for all the cdo teams to hop on board with a lawsuit and blow it up but 11 other teams don't want to don't want it to happen also ben Focusing on what you said about champs being in Saudi, I don't think you are terribly wrong. I don't think we'll see. I, I don't. I don't think you're wrong. I, even if it's not this year, I feel like we'll definitely see an event in Saudi Arabia in the next two years minimum. Um, There's going to be one this year, but it's not going to be. It's not yeah. a COD League event, but there is one that they're running. And yeah, the the esports World Cup, which is going to be mm -hmm. a whole There's thing. There's going to have right? there, apparently. I don't, I, I, I don't, I don't think people actually understand or have paid attention. Saudi Arabia are taking over everything. They yeah. want to be the forefront of everything, not just sports, not just because you see Ronaldo go over there, not just cars, everything lifestyle. They want esports too. They've just hosted like a really big Fortnite World Cup there that was worth millions. Like they want to take over the esports front too, and guess what? They will. Why? Because money talks. Money is the root of, you know, where everyone goes. And Saudi Arabia has all the money, so I, I really don't be surprised if, you know, <laughs> you see you see the boys in Saudi Arabia at a watch party, or you see you see the teams competing in a final in, in Riyadh. I'm 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 telling you, it's 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 bound to happen. Yeah. What I will say is that if you, this is not just applies to COD, this is like anything business related. I, I highly recommend if you are anyone that's watching this show or anyone watching it live, go read up on the Saudi 2030 plan. I think what the Saudis, again, there are, there are a lot of other things we, we should at some point discuss around this and some of the conduct that goes on within that country that I think should be of discussion. Uh, you know, they see an opportunity that a lot of, 
you know, post COVID and, and other market factors that a lot of private equity money and investments is not there. And they can come in and kind of bring in and get a lot of ownership and things, get a lot of equity, get a lot of business upside for not that much risk on their end um, because their fund is fucking massive. Um, and you're going to see it with esports, bro. I'm, I know people call my child at the time and be like, why do you guys keep talking about it? Because I'm trying to tell you all we're in the beginning of it. And a year from now, they're going to be everywhere in this thing. This, 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 this thing that's going to potentially happen this summer, like, I, I mean, you all have heard the same rumblings. There was a B2B conference, a business to business conference in Saudi Arabia, like, nine months ago, 10 months ago. And legitimately, I think every major publisher was there. Most of tier one teams sent somebody like they are, they are heavily trying to get in every game, every scene in every team to try and, you know, they see the gaming industry as a, as a way to get in. Cause a lot of private equity has moved out of this business. And I mean, and very simply, a lot of kids, a lot of people over there, they play a lot of games. Let's be honest. They don't go out much. It's not, it's not like a culturally, I'm going to say as well, Saudi is, is, Kids staying home and playing games, it's very, it's, it's very normal in Asian cultures, whether it's Middle Eastern, you know, Japanese, Chinese cultures, staying inside, staying home, playing games is something that's big there. So culturally, they have a lot of interest in esports there. The biggest BPL server, besides the American one, was the Middle Eastern MENA one. So it's kind of like, just that's to say... That's interesting, I didn't know that. Yeah, just to, just to say that, mm -hmm. that that region really loves gaming, and Call of Duty in particular. Of course, if you've ever heard of like Team Falcon and stuff, they, they really enjoy it, so... Big news on them today. We saw that, Ben. Oh, yeah. yeah. The, si the simple, yeah. simple news. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That was but insane. Listen, all, all I'm going to say is, listen, if we do go to Saudi at some point this year, I mean, King of Body has got to want some people in person, bro. We've seen this guy get some nice wins and L's online against some of these top pros, but I think he's going to have to follow it up with some, some good land content right there. That but, could be a good segue, by the way. King yeah. of Body, because kind For of a free idea I'm tossing on the timeline. So brother, he won't be one daily quite happens, a few times. You know, I know where it came from. Brother, I'm walking into Saudi and I'm dapping up the prince. What's up, baby? <laughs> dapping him up and being like, what's up? I'm here to take over. Let's go, kid. Uh, Just like that. Me and Lamar about to take over all of this, the Saudi Arabian League. <laughs> if they want to get us like a Gulfstream 450. Oh, the only yeah, way listen, I'm coming over is with nameless. that. Come on, baby. I was joking with Nameless, bro, because uh, uh, the big thing in Saudi, obviously because of the desert conditions they have, golfing during the day is obviously not always ideal to turn the time of the year. So they have night a big night golf them. thing. Yeah. Mm. They have a huge night golf scene there. So I'm actually, if we do anything in Saudi and I'm able to go, I would love to partake in night golf. Cause we don't got that in North America. Let me tell you. I'll be we there. Got in I'll California be in like two places. We don't got them in Ohio. I'll be there getting crazy on it. But, uh, I think we've touched on this pretty, pretty extensively, right? About this lawsuit and where it's, where it's going. We've got to start roasting some teams, boys. Yeah, we, let's get into some Call about. of Duty, some other the, some the Call of Duty League stuff. Yeah. Uh, let's talk about Seattle and Brezzy, Illy, this whole situation kind of happening uh, here. Um, pick bro. me, pick me, One pick second, me. we'll get to you. Well, let, let's, let's watch this <laughs> clip that was posted on the Reddit. Um, of the intro, the Surge intro that he's kind of basically been out, like kicked out of. You don't um, have to really like play though with the audio and everything. We can just play in the background, like. Oh, just let it run. No, I mean, I think just let it run. I mean, that's what I did yeah. in the video. Every, every in the intro. And sure. we've seen the intro, but eh, look, I know that teams do this where they change their intro. Sometimes they'll do something to this effect, but I still think the way they've gone about it is so outrageous. Right? Like even in the first shot where they had like it was all four players next to each other, and they've just cropped off one of them, so it's just. The three, Wait, didn't, like... didn't one of you guys say that he's in one frame of this? No, actually, he's not. I, I was misreading it. No, they, the they CDL, fully removed him. Oh, they got after him? this, the CDL put up their own, like, the intro stuff, and they had one, they had Illy in there very briefly. The, the Brezzy so one is so good to me, by the way. This Brezzy one, they just have their little operator skin and go, Brezzy, right. dude. <laughs> so I mean, I mean let's, let's, let's just get straight into it, really. Let's get um, chat. Let's chat. All right, for starters, yeah, I don't know what's going on. But for starters, straight up disrespectful to Illy. Not even to be able to, I don't even know if he's done a tweet. They're probably not allowing him to tweet. Uh, they haven't even announced that he's been benched. They haven't even announced he's been dropped. No one knows what's going on with him. Um, you know, before we get started on anything, hopefully he's okay. Yeah, um, absolutely. hopefully he's okay because, like well. I said, we haven't, yeah, we haven't heard from him. Hopefully he's doing fine. Obviously, you know, we won't go back and talk about all the stuff that happened leading up to this, but he didn't look fantastic. In game, he looked fantastic for sure. Mm -hmm. But 
hopefully he's doing okay. But I just truly wish that there was, you know, something being said so we know what's going on at least. Uh, but if it is due to, you know, Illy not wanting it to be released, then, you know, fair enough. Um, to just completely wipe him out of the uh, intro, though, doesn't explain... That, doesn't actually tell me that something's wrong with Illy because it's like they're trying to forget even Illy even existed. It's like they're trying to Thanos snap him. Mm -hmm. uh, it's like they're trying to push him out of whatever was made around him because he's a big name. He was on Optic for you know for a while. Big name. Everyone's heard of Illy. And now it's just like he's disappeared into thin air. It's like they've chucked him on a... Chucked him in the back room of Seattle's facility, wherever the base, and just said, you know, we're taking your phone. We're taking <laughs> you got food and water. We're taking your phone. You're not here, and that's it, done and dusted. So that's where I'm at with it. Hopefully he's okay. Um, you know, hopefully he's healthy. Like you said, health as well. But from what I'm seeing with Seattle and what they've done, it's like they fully just, you know, tried to you know, detach from the situation, what happened at the event, and just get rid of him and anything associated with Illy towards the Seattle brand. I think yeah, it's mental. I mean, it, go on, Ben. And, and then there you go. There you things. go. I was just going to say, like, if I'm another team right now, I'm confused because I know we'll probably discuss Rocker and Lamar's been frying, but there's been talk about Awakening and I'm sure we'll get into it. Mm -hmm. If I'm doing my job as Rocker's general manager, properly i want to be inquiring about what the situation is with illy because he's been one of the better players in that role so far this year and i feel like i'm not doing my job right if i'm not at least trying to discuss with serge what is going on at this point because illy if he's not in the league because he's not in the league at the moment is a player that on paper people should be interested in so is he suspended by the league we don't know is he benched is he dropped we have no idea so if i was a gm of like any team that isn't top four, I'd be trying to have a conversation with Rambo and these guys to try and figure out what the hell is going on because I don't know. The community doesn't. So someone's got to know. They, of course, of course they know. Listen, let, let's not talk about Brad. They, they, whatever's happening here is obviously wanting to be kept silent. Usually, traditionally in this situation, the silence is so Activision gives cover for the teams because they take all the slack and the teams take none, which is uh, an understandable PR practice out of Activision to protect their ownership groups. You see it in the NFL, Major League Baseball, the Premier League, whatever. Uh, I would assume that any teams that are interested in acquiring him have definitely know what his situation is, either contract-wise, either he's on leave from the team, either there's some kind of league action. Like, they're all aware. I, I just think the frustrating thing for everybody involved is the, the silence. Silence from Inder, silence from the team thoughts from the league of, of a lack of clarity here and they're just acting like nothing happened and this is like the third or fourth time we've seen incidents like this over the years in regards to call of duty and a player conduct it's definitely odd you don't really see it in professional sports you don't really see it in other esports and uh this is always their preferred pr strategy and i don't really get it um i'm gonna kind of go a different way with this the thought is more what positive side did seattle have what positive what positive aspect do they have in talking more about this you know i think the silence in their eyes was probably a reaction to the reaction illy got when he responded to everyone's criticism of him and just saying oh i got over caffeinated and they saw how badly that kind of pounced onto him and the community reacted to any addressing of the situation at all so I think it's actually, maybe I'm devil's advocating a little bit here because I would love to know what's going on with him for sure. But at the same time, if you're Seattle, um, saying nothing could honestly be a better strat than what they're doing right now and pretending it doesn't exist. Yeah, maybe it is a little uh, annoying to the community, but overall for their PR, it's probably a better strategy for them to just let it rock for now. And I mean, if nothing's been said, I'm going to assume that he's still on the team at this point just probably in a bench stroll. So if I'm Seattle, I'm, I'm looking to just stay quiet. Potent, you know, if he is getting better or taking some time off just to um, take care of his health and just take care of himself, that's understandable. And to see him return in the future on that team, I think is going to be great to see a good, a good breath of life for their team, considering, you know, they did not look that great with Brezzy, which we will talk about in a bit here. Um, so, 
I think it's in their best interest just to keep them on the sidelines, not really mention it, keep playing COD, keep pushing ahead, and when the time comes, hopefully get him back on the roster and let his game well, play. They, are they going to announce that, or are they just going to say, oh, no, yeah, they're not well. going to say anything, bro. <laughs> One day, Bre 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 Brezzy's flown back home to France. <laughs> Illy's back in the squad. <laughs> How you doing? <laughs> He's back, in the, he, 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 he's, he's back in the intro, but my thing is, yeah, sorry to cut you off, Ben. Yeah. My thing is, though, if that's the case, why not keep him in the intro? I mean, you have a great, great question. question. You, you have, I mean, why, uh, that's true. That is a good point. Why not keep it? Like, if they're doing this, like, to all be silent, whatever, like that, but don't bring any attention to it. Motherfucker, they've gone on to, they, 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 they've logged on to Premiere Pro and took him out the intro. <laughs> Yeah, how do you I not mean, expect really, to get a reaction from that? Huh? There's really only two choices. Either the team unilaterally made a choice to remove him, or as y'all probably know, you know, anytime you submit these team intros, trim intros, Activision Legal has to review it, right? You know, there's certain things you can't include. Famously, this franchise once did an intro involving actual guns. I think Sam LaRue has talked about, and then the league came back to him and said, y'all can't use this intro or legal. It's not a fan because you're using licensed guns, yada, yada, yada. Either the league has told them you had to cut him out or they chose it. The problem is I don't think we'll ever get to the bottom of that. Wait, I want to just one more thing about that intro, though. Like, typically, when you do pick, bring on a new player, it would make sense to update your intro for the new starting lineup. So I do want right. to give that kind of other side of things that, yeah, they cut him out, but it also doesn't make sense to keep him in and extend the intro with Illy and Brezzy in if Illy's not playing at this time as well. So that it could just be... It could just be simple really simplified reasoning that just looks really bad so maybe the pr person or whoever it was that did it didn't have the forethought of what would happen when they did edit him out but there is a chance that like it wasn't malicious at all it was just we need to update it because it's a new starter you know i uh, know in my opinion he's gone and we won't hear it until <laughs> until he's on a different roster right, to be honest. Honestly, it's the same shit man and i know there's been rumors that the reason that we believe that he's out of search is a similar reason why, maybe not the whole reason, but I know there's been rumors and people have implied it that, you know, this same situation had something to do with why he was, again, just wiped off the face of the earth and optic last year. They didn't even say goodbye to him. I don't know if it's related, but it just, you know, lightning doesn't seem to strike. Why does my fellow brown boy keep getting the short end of the stick with all these teams, man? Why are they trying to delete him from Bro, all the I existence, love Dilly, man? man? But it's just crazy. It's, it's, it's a it's a very bizarre situation, and and like an extreme lack of any kind of public information means we're always going to speculate. And Ender's never been one to just sort of like you know pull a leak Z and turn a stream on and just spill everything about it. So I just don't know if we're going to get to the bottom of of any of this shit. And like to your point, like if they do add him back on the roster. It kind of been a catch twenty two because they had him back in. They have to explain why he's coming back in now and where and, he was. Well, no, so. clearly they don't have to explain shit. So that'll be it's not, well, that but that'll be. It's going to be an interesting one. I don't know how you handle that. Like if he just magically appears on the team one day, we what did the, the broadcast any media is just going to get asked to never ask him the question? Like yeah, it's, motherfucker, it's, smile it's, and wave, smile and wave. That's what a weird, you do. weird, super weird one. Eventually he's going to slip up, bro. Like I don't know. Oh, uh, bro, someone's going to... So I, I feel like Alex going to get fucking... Alex going to get wound up or something like that and just blurt it all out. Because you know how Alec is. Uh, he, he, Alec is Rab's favorite person when he streams. I promise you that. <laughs> yeah, I promise you that. Alec is the best. He he might be worse than Leeksy, but Leeksy, you know, Shotzi does That's it by shit. accident. Alec just doesn't give a fuck. <laughs> like, yeah, leeksy has been calming down a bit. Like. No, nah, go, go ahead. Yeah, because... Oh, go ahead, go ahead. No, I was going to say, that's because Optic stop him streaming when something big's about to happen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, true. I was going to say, the Rab's point too, if Illy was available or, or released, I'm 99% sure that another team, a bottom team, bottom six team at least, would be inquiring on Illy's case immediately, right? Like, Yeah, agreed. You know, like, they're, they're not just going to let him rock, even considering what he would happen, what it looked like, whatever it may be. He's too talented if he's released out of his contract to not take a chance on and, and get him back in the league ASAP if he was released. So um, I think, yeah, I think that's pretty clear cut on that situation. It is odd, but Seattle's handling it this way. I'm not sure if there's a better way to handle it, uh, to keep bringing it up. But we'll see. We'll see what happens with this Illy situation as it unfolds. Um, we do have another bit of drama before we get to the actual league matches from this week. Um, Related, but yeah. As, you know, a little bit of this, this uh, Kismet stare glitch. Uh, did anyone, you know, I, I have my take on this. 
I don't know if it was as crazy as people think it was, but I'm very curious to hear. Ben, what was your thought on this? I know you have a, a thought on this for sure. So I think Austin kind of summarized this problem. We, we talked about this on the flank, I want to say three to five weeks ago, there was an incident with Boston um, on a high rise control where uh, Austin went to the, the uh, defensive spawn, like kind of lay down spawn in the window. Um, and, and that was a spot that people that was un that people were using. And, and like, I think Atlanta, like uh, Austin said that the only team that didn't use that spot against him was like Atlanta phase or something like that. But basically Austin's massive point is like the problem with all these stair glitching spots is you have to basically go in one by one and GA like all of these spots. Like you, like you cannot say we are not going to stair glitch. Like you literally have to eliminate all these spots because people are just going to try and cheese it the whole way. Now, Kiz, I'll be honest, probably because this map is newish and he's just trying to stay down. I actually kind of believe Kiz. I think in the moment he just saw like, he's a pro player, bro. He knows his angles. He sees geometry on the map. He's in the moment trying to find spot to stay down i don't think that he intended this one to be used like i honestly believe him in that but it highlights a bigger problem with how these maps are designed the ability you can actually get away with this and the austin's problem that like unless you just you, you know you solve the problem and you eliminate all the spots like this shit is just going to continue to happen i think the pros yeah. before i let trey go real quick because i know he'll give the pro perspective but like i love slasher but at some point the pros have to stop whining and actually just nail this shit down because they People do this, they moan on Twitter because a player has broken a GA. And we even mentioned it during the watch party tray on Terminal. There's that little toolbox or whatever it is. And that's similar. I'm sure you can discuss, speak to that in a second. But some of these spots are GA, some of these spots are not GA. So it's like either the pros have to actually spend some time, I don't know, a few hours or whatever, to figure out what the hell is allowed, what is not, and write it down. Because otherwise, if it's not officially GA, then Kismet's technically done nothing, and therefore it's fine. But I don't think it's necessarily fine. But if they're policing their own bloody game, then you better police it well. And I think they've done a better job than that than usual. You know, the fact that Zoom was able to help get bloody snaking banned is sensational. Yeah, but it should um, never, bro. It, it should never it come down to Tommy just turning on a stream one day and just ego challenge like mid map on London Docks. Like, it's just. It's just, it comes down to this process is just fundamentally a terrible process. It's a band-aid solution to fix the fact that the league and the publisher are never going to be quick enough to restrict and adjust the meta accordingly to make a fair product. And the players have this convoluted fucking process in a Twitter DM where shit occasionally gets solved, but oftentimes people just kind of act like nothing's going wrong. And then when things do go wrong, it's complain on fucking Twitter, but they don't actually go back to the DM to fix it. And people like Austin, who have come on the flank in the past, I've said that he's tired of the process because he's tired of having to go in there and then whip votes. And it's just, it is a fundamentally broken process and the league and the publisher have to take ownership of the competitive structure of the integrity. They have to make a committee. The committee's got to have the power to quickly and uh, effectively address stuff like that. Don't leave it to the players to just self-police themselves because you're seeing now it's not working. Yeah, um, there's a couple of things to address here. Um, if you watch it back, I hate that there's no video of this, of this, like we only have the pick of it, but in the video, you can tell that his teammates all go down and then he just drops down quickly to like react to what's happening around him. He's not maneuvering himself to the stairs and then dropping. Secondly, most of the time, if you actually watch this map or play it in ranked, the stair glitch is to the right. If you look at this screenshot, yeah. it's actually to the right, right there. Most people, that's where, you know, these little gremlins will do it in rank play. But this spot, most people didn't even know. I've seen it once happen to me in ranked. Someone knew about it. But most pros who don't play with stair glitches and scrims do not know about this spot legitimately. Um, the secondary thing is that the pros in this case, I, I, I believe in the chat and everything else, have deemed this not to be uh, – there's no consequence for, the, for NYSL because legitimately, as I'm stating in point one, point two, like they're not – they understand that kids did it accidentally. Um, and it wasn't something that he, you know, he went forward and did purposefully. So there's no reason to punish him here. It's not like the the uh, snaking one that Skies did uh, in the P1 of, of Karachi. It was not like that. So in my opinion, I think this is just a unfortunate moment, but not one that NYSL should face any consequence for. I agree.
I, I think, <sighs> I think it's just in, a, in a moment, just BS. Why is Rap? Why is Rap keep fucking smiling back? I'm like, I just, Rap always got a grin on his face, and it makes me think like, am All I right. saying some fuge? The yapping the emoji is the funniest shit I've ever seen. In my life. <laughs> He's just staring at the yapping I, emoji and giggling, bro. My, listen, my my Fuck issue email. is. <laughs> My, my issue is with all this stair glitch and GA nonsense bullshit that keeps happening is that there's just little things on the map that are deemed a stair glitch. Like in my reply to that, it was semi trolly, semi not. He's laid down his amount of snow in front of him. I've never seen that before. And I've played ranked play since the day it came out. I've played everything. It's a mound of snow. I don't even think that's a fucking stair glitch. He just laid down in the middle of something and boom, it's a stair glitch. No, someone's dropped the snowball on the floor and you can't see his head. Unfortunate stuff. All right. Secondly, there's other things on the map that pros haven't even looked at yet that are stair glitches that aren't even stairs. It's an yeah. object on the floor. Yeah. What they're gonna What they're gonna do now? What they're gonna do next? Fucking ban laying down. We say we say um they're gonna GA laying down. We say we say this whole time like stair glitches ban stair glitches banned, but I'm seeing people still use the same stair glitch. But just crouching, which is just as bad. You can't rip them off the heady. So what we're we gonna do? Ban hair glitches? It makes no sense. Like I saw a picture like this, uh, Ben, um, last year when Cell got, you know, they 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 banned the stair glitching on the on Ricardo. Ricardo. Spot, right? yeah. yeah, he crouched on the stairs, and it was the exact same angle as a stair glitch, and everyone said he was stair glitching. Actually, he was crouching. Yeah. So end of the day. Like, is it not a stair glitch because someone's laying down and someone's crouching because it's the exact same angle? Kind of doing my head in. Every time you open up Twitter, it's someone's broke a GA, someone's done this, someone's done that. Motherfucker can't even lay down in a clump of snow because he's called a stair glitch. All right. I was a part of it. It got very annoying. Honestly, it's the same with snaking. It's not a pro issue or anything like that. It's a game issue. The animation sucks. You're laying down on some on some stairs and you turn invisible. It sucks. The game needs to look at it and be like, oh, he's laying down on a step that has two steps. It doesn't make any sense. His body should be like laying flat or like it should be see like something should be done more. It's it, like I said, th th this clip really like you know got you know, got to me because the guy's just laying down because he's fighting for his life and boom, it's a stair glitch because he's laid behind some snow. Yeah. Um, right. It's like, you know, and, you know, respect, respectfully to all the COD fans, you're all dumb sometimes because you see, you see, you, you, you see, you see a player use something that's never been used before and you instantly just go, get him gone, gone, a bit, get him gone from scrims. This ain't the same as Seattle. Seattle were abusing GA's left, right, and center for fucking five weeks straight. That's why they got banned for a month. Uh, wait, Kiz, uh, wait, 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 wait. I have, I, have an up, I have an update there. They're not banned they anymore. Was, they were warming up against Thieves yesterday. I yeah, saw that. So, but you know, uh, you know what I'm saying? They were banned for scrims for a while, banned for yes. like a week and a half or so. Obviously, I feel like pros don't actually want to ban teams like that. They're just using them as like a placeholder. Like, this is what's going to happen to you if you carry on. Right. So no one else does it. Right. But the issue is, is that Everything nowadays can be used as a stair glitch. Everything these days can be used as cheese. Um, the only thing I feel like has been good is the non-snaking thing where we allow two pumps. But, you know, two pumps is still snaking in my opinion because you can't fucking see the guy doing it. So, end of the day, we're, 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 the guys are trying their hardest as, as pros, but we always say it's up to the devs to sort it out. Um, and we're just in another... We're in another situation where stair glitching is never going to get sorted out, and you can head glitch the stairs, and it's the exact same head glitch as if you were stair glitching. So, uh, argument sucks. I no, I'm gonna take it the other way, man. The other way is better. I appreciate Slasher. I appreciate the community. I appreciate everyone calling out people pretty immediately whenever they do something that even looks sketchy, because it keeps the law of the land in line. Right? If everyone ignores it, yeah, no, for sure. And it's never brought up, then it just goes under the mat and, and, and it's like it was previous years. We've seen gameplay look better because of the snaking, uh, you know, people getting on ass about snaking. We've seen the game get better because of people on ass about the stair glitching, right? We, we've seen the game actually look better this year, feel better this year, and a lot of the annoyances that have been stuck in the league for multiple years now are gone. So I actually like Slasher doing this, even if it is or isn't, right? I'm on the side that it isn't a stair glitch. It was just an accidental 
gameplay uh, developer issue of putting snow there and causing, you know, a random stair glitch that shouldn't even exist in the game. Yes, I agree that is the case there. But overall, I'm happy that we are so adamant of calling people out immediately whenever they do something that looks sketchy. So now accountability must be taken in hand. I do agree with Ben that we do need a committee. I wrote a whole article about this, that the punishments for GAs wasn't strict enough and wasn't enforceable enough. So I do agree that we need another layer of enforcement. But for the time being, the community keeping people accountable is the best route. Even if it's deemed in the end not to be a big deal, let's at least bring it to the court, which for now is, I guess, is Tommy. He's the fucking juror, uh, supreme leader, the commissioner. $2 billion dollar lawsuit, baby. Bro, it's, you it's know, insane, we got to bring it to bro, Tommy, I man. It's insane that, dude, because we, we just talked about this with the inner thing too, bro. It's just a vacuum of just a lack of enforcement and, and transparency here. And the fact of the matter is, like, Tommy's my guy. He's my duo. And the fact of the matter is, is that, like, as a content creator, he's having to come out here and take control of the scene because people don't want to step up, especially the publisher. It's fucking crazy to me. Like, I just, I don't know how many more years I can sit here. And what dude, this is not like a one-year problem. I have watched Call of Duty for so long now. Every year, some GA bullshit, and every year I'm just sitting there like, why is these activists just going to own this process and then be able to quickly like, kind of speak to these things, talk about what the policy is, and actually have a mechanism to fucking enforce something, and not a GA chat of people that's going to be like, yeah, we're not going to scream you guys have fun. Mm. Well, that's, that, that, well, that was my point, Ace. My point wasn't like no one taking accountability for it. It's my point that there's so much little shit on the map that. The guy doesn't even have a chance to even defend himself because it's all over Twitter by the time he's even left the game. Mm. Because a pro, because the pro has outed him on Twitter instead of gone into a DM. And it's like what Ace says: you need twelve. Fuck it, let's get all twelve captains in a in a in a private match and go over all the cool, go over all the maps, yeah, and just lay behind things. Is that stair glitch? Yeah, fuck it, right? That's GA. That's <laughs> GA. That's GA. That's GA. All right, that's that's my point. Um, and secondly, like. You know, respectfully, Ben, you know, the devs do need to do more. But respectfully, you know, actually, no, disrespectfully, the devs took out Subbase for about a month for a glitch that they said they fixed, and it was right under it anyway. Yeah, that's crazy. That's why so, that was crazy. Yeah. I, so I'm going to be real with you. I don't trust them more. I can trust my, you know, trust myself cooking, you know, a bit of chicken. Um, You know, <laughs> end of the day, they're not as good as that. It, it, we can't rely on them anymore. We're gonna to have to go to the flank. We're gonna to have to go to Tommy. We're gonna to have to go to Ben. We're gonna to have to go to them because they do a better job than they do. As much as I would love what we're saying to be true, that the league will own it. Like, I'm kind of down because there's more content when all the drama happens. Very I mean, true. I mean, yeah, but there would be <laughs> listen. The way you would do it in the correct fashion is you would be a transparent part process that's communicated outwards, and you can react to decisions being made and the statements and all that like there's still like a content pathway and people are no, still going to shit talk each other oh be even with the committee like i'm sure stuff will be under nda but like uh if people are still going to leak conversation their streams and twitter because that's just how it's going to go i i just think people there are people with an activision i know for a fact that just have to use the capital afforded them in their positions to just take control of this process and i know that it's going to require developers to also have to kind of you know, understand that they've got to play ball for the betterment of everyone in all parties. And that's not an easy thing for some of these folks that love to have creative control of their, or their um, product. But at the end of the day, like, I'm just tired of just fucking like talking about GA and map issues and just things that Activision could solve in like one conversation in two hours at yeah. best. Yeah. It's over it. Yeah. I mean, I think we, we, we chatted about the GA stuff enough. Let's hop over to some, uh, some matches. All right. Man. Which trash team do we want to roast first Listen, there's a bro. few options today okay so we have um, i have the list on the stream right now should we start from from the first match of the weekend or should we start from the last match of the weekend recent <laughs> nah, because you say no nah, because no nah, because you say i'm a hater oh geez okay where we start I, man? I mean we don't have to go through them like i'm gonna grab a jury order like order. Uh, yeah yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. now we, 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 we will start from first to we'll start from top to bottom we'll oh, start okay so, we can do it in chronological order okay yeah well, most recent most recent are, are from the first match of the, of the weekend no, we from the first from match on friday first match on friday i was gonna start it. with ravens but we can we can briefly nah. touch no, we, we can miami talk about miami they did lose twice yeah yeah we can talk about miami and obviously sure, yeah. oh, to be fair given trey's here we gotta let him say his yeah piece hey, on hey, trey we're gonna give you the floor here here's the red carpet go ahead and cook for us there was some red carpets this weekend on, on Miami, for sure. 
What did I say? <laughs> what did I say? It's the same shit again. Spanish cod. Spanish cod. Spanish playstyle sucks. Three node. By one of the best teams in the game. Okay, fair enough. All right, what was close? The S and D was it? Was it the S and D that was close? I don't even know. Uh, the hard point was a bit interesting. Hard point, Rio. Rio. Yeah. Guess what? You yeah, expect but... them to take it. What you expect them to take it? Why? Because you got fucking Spanish sub players on it. Yeah. Listen, I love Vickle and stuff like that. Don't get it twisted. This isn't me roasting them. It's me roasting the Spanish play style. There's no structure towards it. It's run gun fry. If you don't run gun fry, you lose very convincingly. That's not me hating. I've played against it for years. Um, I've even I remember I told Ben about this years ago. Um, you've changed Journey out. You put Eric Boom in. Guess what? Like for like player. Why? Spanish COD and their tactics. You're not getting any better by replacing someone like that. Journey, what do you? He had a bad event. You change him out for Eric. Guess what? Yeah. Same outcome. He didn't have a good series. Guess why? Because it's just run gun trade, run gun trade, and it ain't gonna. It might work against it. You know, it might work against you know the bottom teams. Um, it might work against the bottom teams, but it certainly ain't gonna work against the top teams. I'm sorry, it just won't. Um, that's not me. You can you can deem it as a roast or some. I mean, this is you your know. point, right, Trey? Is that you put Eric in, you take Journey out, it doesn't make any difference. No, of course not. None, none whatsoever. They might, he might be, you know, you might get a more consistent player, but you know what? Consistently, like, consistently getting bopped, you know. And we, <laughs> and, you know, and we and we we spoke about we we spoke about Vickles. Um, we spoke about Vickles' tweet the other day. Um. We spoke about Vickle's tweet the other day replying to someone, uh, the CDL scrim tell Twitter. Why? Why would you reply to someone so in insignificant to your life? He doesn't affect you being paid. He doesn't affect you running around the map. It just makes you look a bit, you know, salty that someone's called you shit. And by all means, Vickle, uh, Spanish, everyone, you can all tweet me saying I'm shit. Please, by all means. But end of the day it's not going to change the fact get back in the lab come up with something new and come back get but go back to the drawing board because whatever's working now you know you had a fir your, your first you know your first stage was decent for online you go to land you get bopped you've come back you've been bopped something ain't working so you got to figure it out that's my take on it done done and dusted no roast no nothing i'm gonna i mean i mean i uh, go ahead no, no, mine's mine's a short take mine is just Spanish COD is inconsistent just due to the fact it's head bash, but they did play the two best teams in the game. So I don't think it's a fair assessment for Eric Boom or the rest of the Miami Heretics of how much of an improvement this possibly could be. Um, you know, the, it'd, be, it'd be wild and mind numbing to say that they didn't go back and watch VOD from their losses and the matches from the last stage. We don't truly know if they got better. I think we have to give them a week or two more in these qualifying matches in order to see them against some of the, you know, they don't want to be middle pack teams, but playing Toronto and FaZe right out the gate with your new player fresh into a stage is not the ideal situation. You should still be able to beat these guys, of course, but it's tough when you're still figuring out team chem, pacing with a new player on your team. Um, I'm excited to see them these next couple weeks to see if Eric Boom can continue the type of play he had against FaZe because he was playing a lot better that series than the Toronto series. So, yeah, I mean, it, we can pass judgment that their COD is inconsistent and all that X, Y, Z. But not a fair assessment of them. Let's, I'm going to wait till Dope Check episode 9 or 10 to give my true full take on what yeah. I think about this Miami change, roster, and team. Let it's me the, give you right. I, I was going to say just quickly yeah. before you start. You're right. It's not a fair assessment of the team. But it's a fair assessment of they were a fully practiced team going into the LAN event and they just got wiped. Yeah. Yeah, that's fair. That's that was my thing. You know, they've not like they did play the two best teams coming out of it. That's facts. That that no one's denying that. That's facts. So unfair, unfair on me to judge anything like that. But whatever happened at LAN, they've come online and it's still the same exact play style. That's fair. That's me. Ben, what you got, bro? So so there's like a um a thing in I'm gonna make an analogy and Rav's gonna like this because he knows exactly what I'm talking about. 
And the thing is, actually gets talked about a lot in Formula One called uh, like a, a setup window for your car. And basically, some cars, like the car that Red Bull has right now, is really good in a lot of different conditions. A lot of other cars, high downforce, low down, downforce, high speed, low speed. The cars can be good on some tracks and not good on others. The problem with Miami, and I agree with Trey, because they're so aggressive in their play style. And as if you saw in the series against Toronto on the map, they lost on Rio, where they didn't kill the fourth guy on the second rotation, third hill. And it all spiraled from there because that guy stayed alive got broken on the hill and then they weren't able to like actually get a, a, a rotation on any hills after that you're going to see there are times where their play style isn't going to work and there are times where you saw it in the optic series where the team works on point they were suffocating an aggressive optic team and optic had no answer i just don't think that they're going to have enough of consistency to beat top teams i do think that they have the potential with eric to be top six to potentially get top four in an event and that's why i'm holding pause because I know this week they're going to play Vegas and they're going to play thieves and they may win one of those series or they may win both. And they're two and two. And we're just like, well, you know, it is what it is. But I do think it is a bit of a warning sign that I just don't see this team being consistent at all. And I don't see them being a real contender, at least at the moment. If they lose to Paris, or I always call them Paris. I don't know why I think I love that <laughs> Paris name so much. I always call them Paris <laughs> Vegas or who's going to LAT. If they lose to either of those teams, Blow it <laughs> up! Like, get that oh, man out of like, here! Bring oh, Journey oh, back in, because this shit needs to... We need to get back to what it was. Why? Why? Listen, listen. I love Juan. He's my guy, obviously. He, he moved over here in Montreal for 2019. I talked to him a bunch when he was on ATL Academy. You know, team speak a lot. He's a great guy. He wasn't... Let's be honest to Juan. Like, he wasn't playing his really good enough, I think, to hold down a roster spot here. So asking to rotate uh, w w uh, him in is not going to solve the problem. I think Trey hit it on the nail, bro. It is a play style thing. If they are committed to playing this way this is how it's going to be they're going to be weekends where they fry because it's all clicking the times they're clicking they're suffocating they're on point or they're going to be weekends where they're just randomly running around as a four they're not getting team trades and they're leaving massive gaps on the map that teams at this level especially phase especially toronto are going to punish and execute against you it's, it's what i said to uh, ace um they're a full spanish team that's what their org is you know with the Spanish there's coach. not many with the, with the Spanish coach. Yeah, there's not many Spanish players left, really. You got Real who couldn't even get in the country, so chalk him up. Um, and I think honestly, I think that's it, really. You're right, you got um, Super, you've got like Rencor, you've got like. But other than that, Rencor, yeah. Who the fuck is Rencor, bro? I don't even know. Who, this, Challenger player. I, I, but, I, I, just, I understand. I'm just player, but, like, bro, but my like, these are not. These but are my not point is. But my, my point is, <laughs> my point is, yeah, it's just, it's it's like having a UK team, yeah. When you drop, or like when you need to get a new player in, and you've got a UK team, you need to get someone else from the UK in. Yeah, yeah. And what does that change? UK is a bit different because we actually have a good play style. But you just keep if 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 Journey's the only person that's on the bench, and there's no other Spanish players to get, and you are fully committed to the full Spanish roster. Oh, we're just gonna keep <laughs> journeys out for for Vickle. Oh fuck, that didn't work. Jer <laughs> Vickle's back in. <laughs> journeys out for you know for, like oh, we'll, we'll we'll put we'll put journey in for for lucky. See how like fuck that didn't work. Fuck, uh, gee, where do we go? Oh, Method you're in. Uh, Method you're in for us. Fuck that. Obviously ain't gonna work. <laughs> yeah. We don't play. You know what I'm saying? Like we're just gonna go around in circles. Well, Trey, you speak to. I mean, when you were a pro, and that was the problem with the UK for all those years, especially up and until you know your team that won IW in the Red Reserve years. Y'all used to rotate the same teammates over and over and over. And the problem is that that doesn't eliminate all the tension or issues you had with existing teammates, the team before three times before that. So that's why like, you know, the mixed team angle is, you know, you see what Toronto's doing. It might be the best way to, to get it done. I don't know. And the issue with that is not everyone on that team speaks good English. So yeah. what I said to A what I said to Ace was you're gonna have to say if that's if that's you know if they can continue having these struggles, they're going to have to get rid of the two people or one person that doesn't speak the greatest of English and bring in two Americans or, you know, maybe even we see some Europeans go over there, whoever knows what, what goes on with that and see where that goes. But I, I fully believe they're fully demo, uh, fully, you know, on board with the full Spanish roster. It's just either something's got to change in play style or they've, you know, got to come to the drawing board and speak to everyone on the team and the coach and think, right, we need to look at someone else's VOD and try and copy what they do. Because we know we got gun skill. 
but we're yeah. just so fast and so hectic that this isn't how this game plays. I have to add too, yeah, the fact that they're still beating the, they're still in the middle of the pack. Like they're not a bad team. Let's not. We're, no, 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 yeah, no. We're, we're shitting on them and their play style and stuff. But the fact is that they won a bunch of online matches. Uh, they still contend. They, you know, they took phase on a sub base. Granted, they've been kind of slow. Uh, phase typically are move really slow on sub bases. We've seen it before, but they still took the map. They took a hard point map off phase. That's a, that's a hard thing to do. Inconsistent yeah. or not. If they had some structure, some strategy, the Abedi school is open, by the way. <laughs> the Abedi school is open. So if they need some structure in their lives, they could be a ridiculous COD team considering that they come out here and outgun some of the best gun-skilled players in the entire world. So just some strategy would do them, I think, an amazing amount, and, and their potential would be unlocked if they had that implemented into their gameplay. I, th I think right. before Rab, I think before Rab takes over, because um, we've all spoke a lot and Rab's just been, you know, on the side. I think... I, I think when we, you know, I don't want to say roast, but when we give, you know, extreme constructive criticism, <laughs> um, I Almost think I, I, I think we compare it to the top teams. I don't I, I don't think we have a doubt in our minds that Miami are going to come out and, you know, not beat Paris and not beat LA Thieves. I still feel like we know they're going to do that. But to beat the top teams, I feel like that's what we're saying. Um, or well, me specifically. You know, they played the best two. They played the top two teams in the world, but to beat them, they're going to need to change the play style. Whereas, you know, against LAG, they're just going to run riot and I think smoke them. So that's what I feel. Bro, let's be clear. Toronto has lost to one team. It was the one day where Envoy had probably his worst individual performance in any Call of Duty he's ever played, and they lost to Boston. That's the only loss they have this season, and Faze's only loss. Is it Toronto a couple of weekends ago at the event? Other than that, they've never lost to any of these teams in the league. I know Opti get a couple of different losses, but they're generally going to probably pin it in. And they've only had one upset loss, and it was to it was to Miami. They lost to New York in the the first week, which I don't really fucking count. And the other three losses are a fucking phase. Like at the end of the day, no one's really upsetting these guys anyway. I just feel like sometimes we call these teams to difficult bars, but uh, the consistency for Miami is a problem, and I don't really know if they're going to be able to address it this season. Handily. Uh Absolutely. Uh, let's just jump over to the next couple teams, the next series. The Carolina Royal Ravens played the New York Subliners. Oh, I got and a then... bone to pick with these guys. No, no, no. We were... <laughs> Rab, was real... Rab was real quiet on the last one, and now I think he's been steaming up inside, oh, shit, waiting to explode in. on this one. No, so... we, we, didn't, we didn't let Rab take over. Now is the Rab no, takeover. No, this is the Rab takeover right here. So Ravens played Subliners, and then Ravens played Breach, losing both matches. Has not looked good for them. Rab, what... talk to us, bro. What's happening here? I love Clay, but like, bro, we can't be doing this again and being dog shit in control for two years in a row. And we talked about it before, how Clay's an amplifier, good and for bad. But I've never seen a player in these online cameras who wins a clutch and looks like he's lost it, like Clay. I can't believe my eyes. I'm watching this guy clutch a 1v2 and put his head in his hand. I cut, like, it was the same shit on Vegas last year, and I was thinking maybe that was because, well, you know, the vibes with him and Donny weren't so good or something. But now Fellow's there, now Tej is there, the vibes are not good, they had their honeymoon period, and I'm listening to their comms in the respawn, and it's the same shit as Vegas last year when they would get slapped. I know that it's they're not playing from a facility, they're playing stretched out, and I can... Imagine it's a nightmare because they've been promised this facility by Carol. It's not happening and it's getting delayed. But, like, they went up 2 0 on subliners. And I know I'm probably getting extra annoyed about this because I was the only person to pick Ravens to beat New. And I thought it was a fire prediction. And it actually was, but I still got torched because I got bloody reverse sweat. And I knew they were getting reversed as soon as the control happens because you could look at their face cams, especially going into game five. They just looked defeated, and I didn't understand why. It was still game five, 10 big CDL points in the line. Lock the fuck in. I just don't get it. They, they just look so defeated, and they're 0-2. They have the easiest schedule they could possibly ask for, and they're starting off in a nightmare position. Yeah. And um, it's, just, it's just a shocker, Ben. It really frustrates me, because there's potential there. But all of a sudden, I'm looking at this team, and I'm thinking... Both Clay and Fellow are getting fried. I said it when this team initially I'm like, I can't see this ARG. And at this point, I don't even know if Clay's lasting the test of the bloody season. 
Let me. Ben, uh, I was gonna say, what's your, I was gonna say, what's your opinion, Ben, on Clay being on the worst control team for every year running? Yeah, that's about to mention. Like, like a trivia question to you guys: What team has Clay been on in the history of the CDL that he's been a good control team? Because I can't remember <laughs> any of the teams he's been on that they've been in the lead of the game. But I know that the only thing I can think of is like there was a time in a period when Paco first joined that. Uh, that New York team was disgusting at checkmate control. Like they were actually a mm -hmm. team you did not want to score up on that map. But you know, being good at one map doesn't mean you're good at you know Gary control or, or raid control, which I don't think they really were. Um, and obviously, I know that in Black Ops Four, he had a very good control team, completely different game, five on five, and he was also teaming with uh, two of the best uh, control players probably to ever play the game mode in Simp and Abizi at this point. So uh, yeah, I don't know. There's, there's a fundamental issue I think with him and his teams in this game mode, and it's really, really difficult. If you can't close people out in game threes we've seen this season, the reverse sweeps are coming because another team's taking team B and you're getting the best hard point map and then you're getting a game five S and D. As far as like Clay's kind of conduct when you watch him play, he's very hard on himself, right? I've known Clay for a long time. And he's someone that, you know, is an old school player. And Trey, you probably vibe with this. Like he's chasing perfection, bro. If we're making mistakes on the map. It's it just yeah. it be difficult to overcome that. And you can see that emotionally it weighs on him. I think at times he needs to do um and it's hard to do do a better job of compartmentalizing that and not letting that frustration become frustration for your teammates that it affects their ability to execute timings or make timely decisions what do you think well what i was gonna say is that i, I look at it the same way that i was when i was on london with the new boys you know we had nasty afro and, and gizmo and i feel like you look at the guy that's you know supposed to be like the most professional and stuff like that and you see him you know do you know huff when he dies or you know like rab says like not look like he's you know 100 percent on it like he get he clutches a he clutches a nice round or something like that and he looks like he's lost the round and lost the series i think it's more of um you know you got to look at it as the fact that he's supposed to be there to to you know bring bring gwyn up you know gwyn is looking like rookie of the year right now and he he hasn't got a he hasn't got a series to show for it this 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 split, um, and I think we can all agree that Gwyn is you know, Gwyn is unreal. You know, he's I think we can all agree is. with that. Um, him and Linz, you know, we'll get to Linz later, but him and Linz right now looking like rookie he is. You know, I feel like Clay could help out a lot more if he was more positive i think that's the best way to put it because we know he wants to win he tries so hard to win that he just when he loses it it hurt it i don't know i look i get a bit upset when i see clay lose because i can i can see it in his eyes but i feel like we look at clay when he's playing and it looks like he's lost before the series even you know over and i think that's what rab's getting at as well that if he looked like he was winning every series even when he's down just to show that show the boys that are around him especially the rookies and you know even tj and fellow that have been in the scene for a while they would happily you know you, you can't you can't be harsh on someone that's harsh on themselves when they lose but when you know we look at control i already said to ace you know look at control clay's been on the worst control teams ever since it, we, we chalk up control every single time to them. I say, oh, this is 2-1. They're down 2-1. They're down, you know, they are, you know, I don't, I don't have faith in them to win a control and I don't think they have faith in themselves to win a control. I, it's, in my head, it's like, how shitty of a feeling is it when if you lose the first map of a series, you're almost like, bro, this is GG's. Like, basically, we have to win the surge and it's basically GG's. If, uh, if, we, if we don't win the first map, we may win the surge. Third map, we're losing and then it's a toss-up. Like so that's a, a bad mentality. Man. That's a terrible feeling to have and, and likely a bad mentality that the controls essentially chalk before you even start the series. Um, that's the first thought there. The second one is the, you know, I like Fellow. Fellow's a friend. But his online play is just so absurdly bad and some of the decision making he makes online are very questionable where it seems almost odd that it's like a different player. Like someone else is behind the sticks online compared to who's playing on land. So there's something, I don't know what, if it's just early team chem, right? Like they're still generally a new team. We have to keep that in mind. Like they're not, they haven't been around for that long. But something needs to happen. Specifically, I think with the team, the chem of fellow playing with the team um, where he plays better online. I think another example of that is the wake. It's the comparison of wake online this season compared to wake on land. 
Um, just come a couple of players that I feel like need to improve quickly, and especially how fast Ravens have been with swapping out players. If I had to pick one person on this team who could be on the chopping block randomly again tomorrow, it would be Fellow. Um, yeah. so, so he definitely needs to start catching up quickly and assessing the issue online and getting ahead of it fast. I mean, Ace, I was going to say Ace before before Ben hops in, that control they could have easily won. Oh, absolutely. We watched it. And we're watching veterans such as TJ, you know, chow across the map when he doesn't need to for the loss. Yeah. And... You know, these ain't rookies. How long has TJ been a pro for? You know what I'm saying? Like, you know in your head that you don't chow things like that, and he chows it, and it results into a loss. And we sit here and call him the worst control team in the game because those are the types of plays that make you the worst control team in the game. Right. Yeah. Right. That's why they're so bad, because it's not just one time and someone's like, ah, oh, shit, my bad. It's every round. Yeah, but I mean, they also like folded hard in then SND Karachi. Like, like, bro, at the end of the day, like, I, I, I just think this team is not talented enough to really do anything. I think, I, and I don't mean this in a, in a disrespectful Jesus. way. Like, you know, you got, you got three players are on a different side of their career when they were younger. And, and I just think yeah. this team is going to try a bunch of changes over the course of the next couple of stages to try and find a, a champ spot. But, but let's not sugarcoat it, bro. The only two wins. They gotten so far this year was that inexplicable win against Vegas week one, and I don't know how they beat New York at the major. But other than that, it's been it's been tough sledding in these series. I think they had a decent one against Phase. That was one I'll tip for the ball back, and then the Thieves won subsequently after, but they lost both those series. I just don't see how this team's gonna find a way to really, I don't know, get top eight this year. It's just it's just I don't see it, man. I, really don't. I just I think I was, Clay. I wish like... I was wrong. I wish I was wrong. Online cards. It's just for the birds as far as Clay is concerned. Like, yeah. I think Clay is staring down the barrel of five consecutive weekends of online matches before the major and thinking, what the hell am I doing here? It's the same thing that Formal went through. Like, Clay is a different animal on land. That's where he wants to be. But he knows that they have to win some of these bullshit online matches to even qualify for winners. And it's hard enough. Terrible to mentality. Do. Terrible mentality. But you are correct. He's been doing this for. 15 years now and I, I do agree it is online cod is definitely getting to him but as a professional you've just got to get on with it yes that that's that's literally it um and like you said you see him you know look upset and stuff like that yeah it's online cod they're not in a facility god knows what carolina are doing oh wait no i do terrible <laughs> um it's uh, you know res disrespectfully of course um but yeah. you know it, it it you are correct it is online cod we've seen like you so formal crim six all those players are just by far different people on land and it's hard to show you know clay's getting hyped in his living room where he wants to be getting hyped on main stage and you know that's a different person that's a different beast so you know you are correct but if that's the case and you know to be a professional you have to be you have to get out of that mindset yeah i don't think it's i don't think it's an excuse but uh you know, the, the Ravens is, is a question mark, even I think going ahead into these next couple of weeks. The, we, we could see it, they made a change radically in the middle of stage one. So we don't know what type of twists and turns this team could make over the next few weeks. Uh, if they do keep losing, starting off 0-2 is not the foot you want to start on. And their schedule, honestly, doesn't seem to get that much better from here. You know, Breach was going to be they a little They play Surge bit next, though. Yeah, I mean, even that's a little bit that that's a toss up. It, you know, right? If you don't beat your surge, then GG is no re. It's yeah. over, bro. <laughs> like you gotta call it call it a day. Yeah. But speaking on their first opponents, I want to talk a little about NYSL if we could. Um, NYSL, such an interesting two and zero on the weekend. What a team! Right, but this wow. is, it's reminding me. <laughs> it's literally reminding me of the first stage where it looks good on paper, right? On paper, a two zero great weekend. We, we reverse swept and then we beat Seattle. But if you actually sit down and watch the matches like me and Trey and then, you know, us, all of us, all of us three, all of us four have, it didn't look easy. It was chippy, hard fought wins against teams that 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 team on paper should be waxing, slamming, choke slamming out. No contest. Right. They they they, let, they allow themselves to go down zero two against Ravens. The Seattle series, you know, look at the match details so everyone can remember them. You know, the first hard point was chippy. The sub base hard point was chippy. Uh, the search and around terminal had its back and forth. The control wasn't close. But 
I don't know. In my mind, they didn't look like they made that many improvements. It still looks like the NYSL team from stage one. There's holes in their respawn category uh, like there was the first time. So I'm worried when we see New York playing those top four teams, top five teams. Because of right now, it, they didn't even look that dominant or that great this week one. I will say I'm happy with seeing them how they play. Obviously, they got they had to reverse sweep Carolina, you know, and we saw them in the first first stage. They were looking good. I think their I think their X factor player Hydra hasn't been playing amazing or Hydra standard that we've seen over the past you know two years. And by that I mean 1.4 is 1.5s. The guy's an animal. I'm not gonna we're not gonna sugarcoat it. Um, but that's not the reason they're losing. I feel like they are. I guess the LAN, when they came back, probably took them down a few pegs a little bit and probably had them lack confidence in themselves as a team. And now they're probably just trying to rekindle that in somewhat way. Um, and there's no better way than doing it in reverse sweeping. You know, if you get 3 0 in that series or 3 1, you look at yourselves like, wow, we might not be a good team. But they reverse sweeped, uh, reverse swept. I'm happy to see how they carry on. Um, you know, they got Boston next week. Um, should be they got Boston and Faze next week. You're looking at a three and one week if you if you you know judging it off off you know the record of that. But I, I'm I'm excited. I, I like watching New York play. I think Sibs a Sibs a good pickup. Um, I think he fries. I just feel like they all fry a bit too much and lack the team ability um, where it's needed. Bro, it's a good point because I was watching. Uh, first off, I'm ignoring the CL series because I don't even think CL, CL barely played, bro. The the <laughs> control high rise round two is the most criminal shit I've ever seen in a CDL match. So like they, they didn't even they even plug in their controllers there. The Carolina series though, like there were a number of plays. I thought um the sub base hard point Sam Octane pointed it out. There was the last P1 where Paco had a chance to kind of really put them in a position to just win off a few seconds on P2, and instead of up in the hill and trusting the team to look over him. And get the kills and then they win that way he decides to push out the bottom server chat, right? and die yeah and then yeah and then that's what you said Ace. Time. Yeah. he got broken on p2 and then that was that was wraps on that like i i just think i i listen i was right and also wrong about this team i was wrong that i thought that you know um it would be fine a respawn snd would be the issue it's the opposite way they've been pretty solid in snd and respawns the issue and i think it's because i was right about the fact that bringing in dante and they haven't yet figured out how to execute the system they want a hundred percent. And I'm not sure if it's, you know, to what we point out, like Hydra is not making place for the win or between, you know, especially kids and Dante, there's not an alignment on, you know, making the right play to support that. Cause that's what they did a lot last year. Right. You watch the way they played with kids and Preston last year on Mono Warfare 2. Paco was play calling and Preston and kids were selfishly playing around it. And once they got to the end of the season and they were fully versed in their tactics, it was like unguardable because Paco was winning all the gunfights and the other guys were making the right plays this year. Not so much. And they gotta get a they gotta get it going. They lost a lot of points by not getting um not getting any points at land, but they're still in a sport to qualify for chance. But the last thing you want to do is squeak in with like a six seed. They they're sitting in the fourth seed right now and they gotta try and, you know, now the season starts right here, kick it on for this weekend. Next week's gonna be really telling because Boston seem to have made some progress. And then they play FaZe last match of the weekend, which is gonna be a real test up. It's a tough one for New York because realistically speaking can they expect to be as good as they were at the end of last probably not like regression to the mean the other teams improved i wasn't expecting them to come in and be the best team again but yeah i guess it's a question as to whether the sib pickup has interrupted the level that their smgs play at because they no longer have the best smg duo. they no longer have the best sub in the game and they no longer have the best supporting sub in the game which they did at the end of last year pretty much hands down that's not the case anymore the question is i guess is that a this game thing or is that you know sib not being in position there's also questions about like comms and you know whether those guys don't have the mental fortitude that they might otherwise need i think maybe you see that sometimes in the comms um i don't know if i agree with that though i i I don't think like vibes and comms are the issue with this team. I just think, um, you know, they had a couple of really weak maps in, in major one terminal hardpoint, especially was a big stinky for them. I think invasion search, if I remember was like the one SD map, they were a bit iffy on 
and uh, at least one of those is now not in the pool, and I expect them to play Rio upcoming because New York is always like very, you know, cognizant of trying to expand their map pool. I, I just think um, the lack of efficiency in this game, which is a game of scams, less so than last year where you didn't have red dots and you can kind of bail out because if you just play the way that Paco does or AG does or at times the BZ does, Kleenex does, like you can get away by being a crazy child guy because no one is knows where you're on the map because there's no fucking red dots. No one knows how to call out. Uh, it just doesn't work in this game. And so if they can't get that full team chemistry, like it's going to be a problem when you play a Toronto in a phase who are just as good at search as you are. And by the way, Boston's not an easy out because New York played them uh, before the major. And uh, like they were one insane one before away from going around 11 with Boston. If Cap had actually clutched that fucking final round of uh, high rise S and D. So I don't know, man, it, this, this weekend, I got, they got, they got honestly, in my, in my opinion for New York, they got kind of two freebie warm up series. Next week is where the stage really starts for them. I, I think the best way to put it is they had the formula with Priester and they probably wasn't expecting to change until all that, you know, information came out about Priester and they had to pick up the next best thing on the market before someone what, else did. What, because, what info about Preston? About him not, you know, getting the salary you wanted or whatever like that. Like they had the formula with Preston and then obviously Preston. That was still a name, you know. <laughs> Listen, huh? Trey, you, Tristan, I'll say this because I really don't care. And Trey, you were on this organization before. I, there are people within the org that, that love Dante prior to last year, and they definitely tried to acquire him. Oh, of, talked about that on the flank. Of course. I, I think that pressing thing and that is just a convenience excuse uh, in the situation for my people. Okay. Okay. But my point is when you win champs, you don't change. 100%. Yes. You know, that, that, that is stupidly, that is dumb. Whether it's Priester getting forced out or whatever, or whatever, whatever the situation is, they had the formula. They changed the formula. Different game too, Ben, you're right. No red dots, no anything like that. Squad spawns as well. I already said to Ace that squad spawns for Hydra is a dream. Yeah. Because no matter what play you make, they still spawn in the exact same spot. Whereas these days you, make, you, you move one millimeter past a place that you're not supposed to spawn start getting a bit crazy and you know you're not popping a three piece and then turning around and popping another three piece you're popping <laughs> you're probably popping a death and then spawning across the map <laughs> and you know oh, man. I, I i'm i'm excited to see him play um I, I i feel like we've you know probably touched on new york a lot because we we've like roasted them and stuff like that but then you got boston ah oh, shit it, it it can be tough. I mean, bro, New York also have to play uh, uh, Optic this split. Um, I think they have Miami and LAG, if I remember from my tier list. I did tier list video this morning. So, like, it, like New York, this split, I expect them to make winner's bracket, but the last thing you want to do is get 7th or 8th seed, and you're playing New Phase or Toronto or, or Optic, luckily in your first round. And, and right now, I don't think New York is in a position. I guess we'll see. The, the also, bef week, if in before, we start, before we start talking about Boston Ace, yeah. we need to start... We need to stop this whole like our teams overperforming or underperforming. What do you mean? The, you know how everyone's like, oh, this team looked good. No, they played a fucking shit team. Let's be real. <laughs> they played a fucking ass team. Okay. Um, I, we'll 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 get into that with with one of these, and I saw some opinions. Obviously, you can these. only be. <laughs> obviously, you can only <laughs> obviously obviously you can only beat whoever's in front of you but people overanalyze a bit too much. And I'll get down to it when we talk about that series. But Ace, Boston, opinions. Okay. When they play one series, it's tough to read much into Boston. Really. Yeah, I, but here's the issue from the series. Although it's great that they got the win, if you take a look at some of the numbers, right? 250 to 222 first hard point, 46 terminal, 32 high rise, 250 to 21 Karachi. It's closer than you'd like it to be against the Ravens. With a team of that caliber, you have Priesta, you have Slasher, you got Asim now, you're running with, you know, the, the hype of Snoopy. You should be kind of decimating a beaten down Ravens team. It shouldn't be so close. You shouldn't be going down to the wire with them on almost all of your game modes here. I'm going to repeat the problem again. The problem with this squad really is nice, Snoopy. It wasn't Capsidal. Snoopy is currently in development, yet he's playing with some of the best and most veteran players that we have in this entire league. He needs to catch up to speed. 
and not throw away his life. If we watch Optic this, if you guys watch the Optic match this week, if you watch Shotzi, he was playing a lot better at Call of Duty, playing a lot more reserved, and not jumping out and doing a lot of craziness on the map like he was the it's first Rio, thing. Bro. No, 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 no. But, but let me cook. 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 Bro, you're not cooking shit. Let right me now. cook. Let me cook. <laughs> Shotzi was playing a lot better. If you look at this series and watch Snoopy's dot and how he was playing, he was throwing away his life quite a few times in key moments in the hard points and in the high rise. Overall, I think he needs more time to develop. He has the gun skill, but he doesn't have the awareness on the map, especially in a game like this that's not squad spawns. Let's keep in mind, he's played COD mostly in squad spawns with snaking and stair glitching and all the other things. That's his knowledge. That's how much COD he, yeah. he's grown up in. You need to give him a second, learn the new, new system of COD here, Okay, how COD I, should be played, by yeah, the way. Yeah, honestly, how COD should be played, and then bring him back on. I think the capsule drop was criminal, although there was stuff, again, rumored ah. outside a rumored outside a game that happened. <laughs> but gameplay-wise, capsule was is better than Snoopy to have in this roster. That's it. Let me let me let me pop Nemo for a bit here. I don't entirely disagree with you. I do think that Snoop's lack of quality decision making, he gets caught running backwards a lot. Like there are little things when I watch him play. That he definitely needs to work on that are bad tendencies from squad spawn, no red dot type of call of duty. Um, and that is going to limit their ceiling. But I do think that Capital did cause some issues on this team from a gameplay sort of strategy standpoint, from a lack of quality decision making standpoint, throwing his life away. And that's why they brought in someone like Asim, who's going to be a lot more disciplined and more structured behind Snoop. And that way you're going to be able to set a better pathway for Snoop to develop on this team. So I don't think you're completely wrong on that front. I just think excusing capsule in the situation is kind of wild i will say on the hard point front like keep in mind we're playing for boston they're playing invasion with new hills and karachi with new hills for the first time so i think you're overthinking the close hard point maps considering both these teams a boston got a new roster and b they're playing these maps that have been like completely world to be told what i'm concerned about with boston now is the fact of the matter that you know they were in a great uh elite search team with cap and i'm concerned with this squad that it might be at that level or worse. So something to monitor with Boston, actually. That, I think, might be their Achilles heel with the squad. Yeah, I got bloody food poisoning for Mises cooking right there. Like, I just don't get the idea that Snoopy sending him to challenges is the way to let him develop. Like, I think this is a dog shit take. If you put, them, if you put a player like him down to challenges, he's just going to play the way that challenges play, which is not the way that the pros play. Like, if you actually want Snoopy to develop and improve, Pairing him with Slasher and Priester is like the best thing that you can possibly do. And sure, maybe he hasn't shown the growth that you'd like to see yet. But, you know, a guy like Gwyn, a guy like Linz, sure, they've come in and done well initially. But giving them more time in challenges is not the way to go. I know we made an F1 analogy earlier, Ben. But when Max Verstappen was thrown in to Formula 1 at 17, it was a very raw driver. Lots of mistakes, lots of errors, lots of problems. And... He didn't really dial that out of his driving for a couple of years, but he was super young. But sending him to Formula 2 would not necessarily have made that a better process. So I think with Boston, you've just got to recognize that you've got to take some of the pain. But in terms of Snoopy's learning curve to get them to where they think he can be, sending him to challenges is not the play. I do think Asim is a much better compliment to him than Capsida was. And look, maybe I'll be on board that if this new team doesn't work out and Snoopy stays just getting giga fried sometimes and frying at other times, there's a debate to be held on that. But Boston clearly sees Snoopy as a talent for the future. And I just don't think throwing him down to tier two is the way to go. This is basically, I'm literally not kidding with you. This is like very similar to New York Strat over the last couple of years. Like they have a aggressive sub player who still needs to learn how to play the game at a high level whose communication is definitely not there and they're going to put structure behind him to put him in the best spot to develop i've talked to asim who just recently joined this team i've been you know trying to get a feel for how the team's playing and 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 practicing and he likes snoop but i mean you know they they know that that is sort of if they want to win championships asim has won cdl has won a cdl chip um uh, cdl major preston's obviously won a couple events last year and a champs uh, a COD champs. Obviously, Austin's a COD champion, has won events 
um, uh, in the CDL. Like, there's a lot of experience here that when they get to that level, this team will be very dangerous. If they can get that diamond level, like, no one's going to want to play this squad. Um, it's just going to limit... Um, until they can develop Snoop, it's going to limit their ceiling. I don't think sending him back to challengers, unless he starts dropping, like, 0.8s or is a terrible teammate, is going to be worth it. It is what it is. You're going to live with it. And they just got to try and manage his development over the course of the rest of the season. We're early, bro. The beginning of Major 2, there's still some time for them to get him in a spot because this team will make champs. You just don't want to see this be like the Boston teams from the last two years where they got in the seventh, eighth seed and they were out of here by like Friday morning at COD Champs, you know, last year enjoying the sunlight in Vegas. They want to actually be here on the weekend and having an opportunity to grab a hold of that trophy when all is said and done. Yes. Okay, wait. There's two things to address here. One, there, exactly man. the last thing that Ben said that they want to have, they want to develop, they want to get the trophy out. They're not there just to just to be their middle of the pack. This Boston Breach organization is clearly shown through their content and, and how much effort they put into the organization and their facility and everything else. They want to win. They want to be a winning organization, right? You have a shorter season this year with only four majors. You don't have the time to develop a player out the same way like you've had previous years. This is why, one reason why I'm saying when you have vets on the team now, including Asim, who's now a third vet Trying to develop a player out is a tough thing to ask when these guys, especially, let's say, Slasher, is, you know, we can all admit getting toward the latter half, at least, of his career. Maybe the latter quarter of his career, right? Taking the time to develop someone out is pulling away from the success he wants to see immediately. Secondly, we can all, I think we can all agree here. Asim was an absolute W for this squad. Asim has come in and looked like a great compliment to the others on the team. Been a good flex player with the AR. Uh, did not look that great in search, unfortunately. He dropped, you know, dropped a little bit of a stinker. One in, was he one in nine? Eh, it's, ter it's terminal. SD, yeah, I, I agree. I'll, you know, I'm going like, to like, give him that out, right? He was one in it, nine, whatever. but you know what happens? They, they, you know, what it happens, whatever. You play against a good search team in Ravens, at least, who have some good SD stars. He's also, he's also left sticking too much in map one. He talked about in that post game interview, like he was, he got the sprints the first couple of maps. And yeah, he, you know, he, he's back, he's, be, he's back with his team. It's new. Yeah. But overall, he had a really good series and it looked, the team definitely, I'll give him this, looked a lot more cohesive with Asim on the team rather than stage one when it was Capsule and Snoopy. So I will give him that credit that Asim is a great glue to this Boston Breach squad. I think some of my chat made a good point. Like the only other route I would have seen for Boston is like, if you wanted to really dive in, you take ASIM and Cramp and you put them together. Um, they were obviously a great sub duo in challengers, but obviously it seemed like Cramp had other offers. Now it's probably unlikely. I like this draft from Boston. Again, it is going to be incredibly difficult for anyone not named New York subliners to put a team together. That's going to beat optic phase and Toronto on a consistent basis, other than just catching them on an off day. So you're really all at the moment, kind of playing for top four in a lot of these situations. It is what it is. And I think this Boston team has the potential to get there. They got a few things to work on. This obviously was a fun series. And we'll see if with some of the tougher opponents, because no disrespect to Carolina, I don't think that they're, you know, at the high tier level of, of the best competition in this league right now. When Boston, you know, squares up against New York or Minnesota Rocker, we haven't talked about yet, or Phaser Optic during the split, we'll really see where this team is at development wise. Absolutely. Let's just. Thing, oh, go ahead. Yeah, go on. I, I was just. I was just gonna say last thing on the on the Snoopy thing. He played in the league last year. He's had, however two many matches, months. Though. Two matches. Yeah, no, no, no. That, I'm, that's I'm, a, that's I'm, I'm not saying that. I, I'm. I, I'm including scrims too. Okay. He had. I'm eight, he had like too. ten scrims. Okay, great. I'm. 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 I'm not saying that, but he's also started this year in scrims too with Slasher as well. Let's start this. You need to start. Whatever's happening in the scrims, you need to start. If this is a if this is the whole developing process, scrims obviously need to be, you know, what you need to take them more on board because it's if we're talking about this in matches and something's clearly happening in scrims. I feel like if we're talking about developing a player, we're only looking at the matches. We don't get to see their scrims, and either they need to be harder on him in scrims, so we so we don't have this opinion. Bear in mind, our opinion could suck. And this is how they want him to play, which is fine. But what I'm saying is, if you want a player to develop, there's no better place to develop than scrims. And I feel like if their scrims aren't going as good, then he's not going to develop as well. And, you know, only Ben probably knows how their scrims are going from, you know, being friends with Asim and just, you know, knowing and just hearing things in general. Um, but I feel like 
if they want Snoopy to be a better player and stuff like that, they need to work on him more and develop him more because clearly they don't need to develop Slasher, world champion. Don't need to develop Priester, world champion. Ace him. Been in the sea multiple years. That's, I feel like that's it. You know, it, it's it scrims is, you know, practice how you play. And, you know, if that's, if that's where we're going with this and they need to be harder on him and develop, develop him in scrims. It might lean to our coaches discussion we had last week, Trey, as well. Like, I know people have been moving some attention towards Zed and Dens and stuff like this to see if, um, if that's justified. But speaking of coaches, right, Rambo on the surge, what is he cooking? We've got to address the surge. <laughs> what, 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 what a twist and turn this man just took us on. <laughs> Holy shit. Pivot. Holy yeah, shit. that was a crazy pivot. That, that was a We're travel right there. We've got to keep right it there. moving here on the show, okay? I mean, right, this, but... is what I said, this, this is what I said to you before we had this discussion. Is it another, you know, we could talk about LATs as well, but is it another thing where they're trying to, you know, bring Brezzy in to help abuse her? It's fucking shit. <laughs> okay. Oh, they have they have systemic. Listen, this team has systemic problems. First off, their communication as as a squad is not particularly good. I will say, I think they had a listen in during this match, and it was better than like the yo yo yos I was hearing the last time they were playing, like um, at a match. I, I just think that there are. Listen, this did they made a mistake? I think personally in constructing this roster to start off with. Uh, by putting Inder Alec, Tyler, and Abuza together and, and putting Abuza in and not his best role. I don't quite understand why Seattle made that decision. And I don't know why they didn't just commit to taking one of Alec or Inder. And candidly, and I love Alec, you know, you know, he's my guy. Uh, he's been at the highest of highs, but he's still slumping the same way he was last year. And if this team wants to, like, have any kind of form, especially when Kyler is not having his best of series against the team, there's a lot on Alec. It's not going to be on Brezzy. He's still got to figure out how to make it work. And by the way, just moved across the fucking globe to go play with his new team, like all overnight. Like that's obviously not an ideal situation. And he likely won't be comfortable for weeks, maybe at best to where he's living at. Like Alec is the one that's got to step up here, but I just don't see it. They're under practice. They wasted an entire week on whatever was going on with the LA situation. It don't, it, they are, I would just completely and utterly chalk the stage for them. There's no point in wasting too much oxygen about it for my POV sheesh man uh damn son all right we just cooked uh, we're just cooking and surge overall i don't know what else you want me to say like. no no it's no, it's, it's, it's the, the truth the, the, it's the, the truth the, the, the matter the of fact just is, doesn't make it don't make sense yeah the matter of fact is the, the pickup sucks it's i mean good for brezzy right let me clarify hold on, hold on, hold on. let me clarify let me clarify let me clarify no no i'm not, I'm not saying good. he sucks i'm yeah, saying yeah. their pickup like yeah. they, out, out, out of everyone they could have got that sucks well, that's kind of that's still kind of od what you're saying now. I'm gonna be honest. No, because <laughs> I'm not. No, I'm luck. not roasting. I'm not. The, he doesn't make the team better. Not because he's not better. Because he's that, that's just not the player yeah, they, they had need. To, they had to bench their best player. Like they were always gonna be, regardless of the moves they made here, unless they somehow swindled, like dropping three people on the roster and completely showing a new lineup here. They they were not gonna play with India. It was always gonna be difficult at this stage. And the problem that they made. What I mean. Bro, yeah, no, they didn't let, make a. Let me. They didn't make a quick decision. They didn't make. Listen, if they had made the decision the day after the event. And gotten Brezzy in that week and maybe got an extra week of practice, this would have been a different conversation. But like as far as I know, he didn't get to North America until the like middle of last week. Like they le legitimately, like they were stacked deck was stacked against them because of how late they made this change. Yeah, not not only did they make the change late, not only were scrims fucked for a bit, not only is Team Chem brand new, not only is your best player now benched. Everything is stacked against the Seattle team. If they come out in winners at the end of this, I will tip my hat off to them uh, and absolutely give them the uh, you know, kudos. Like, good job. You guys yeah, beat the great. odds. Um, but I think I, even before we were talking about the previous uh, the previous topic of the European teams and all that, I just want to bring up a, a little bit of a graphic for you guys just to note it out. Historically, Western European teams have not been competitive in Call of Duty at an international level. Heretics, the top Spanish team, earned an average placement of 21st against global competition in 2018 and 2019, right? 21st. Go to French roster. Wait, wait, this, wait, this wait, 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 wait. Let me finish. Is ben, let me, let me so finish. Go, no, no, go, back to that. go back to that image. It is a stupid fucking image. Go back to that. No, no, no. no. <laughs> go back. Go back. Because, oh, bro, look at it. Bro, come the fuck on with this shit. What do you read the actual placings between both years? You're really gonna go with this, bro? Come but on, bro. listen, 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 listen. Top eighty events. You look at him. Black Ops Four when they were in the league, dude. dude. No, 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 no. I want to make a point here. I want to make a point. Here. Actually, listen, uh, uh, look. And then there's the French rosters that average around twenty sixth. My point is, my point simply, two things: adding in the French, adding in another French guy, 
into the roster to make Abuza comfortable. I think overall as a choice, you could have brought another NA kid in and it would have been a better move. This is my point. Why okay? are we shitting on Brezzy? Brezzy has played good this year. Someone should... Have, I've been saying for fucking two years that someone should give a chance on this fucking kid because he was Bro, playing good Here's my in, issue in, with the Euros. In elites, here's in my issue with the Euros. Trey is going to... Trey, I want Trey to come in obviously here because he is, he is a Euro, right? But here's my take on the Euros, especially the... The Spanish Euros and the French Euros. Euros. No, it's the Euros, right? They play a lesser degree of, of, of difficulty in COD than others do in their Euro the, challenge. The cousin is getting carried by a Euro regain. What? That, that's bro, that's the most irrelevant take I've ever heard in my entire life. My point is this. They're playing... What did, what, how well did Brezzy do in the in, uh, Boston Challengers? Anyone? He got... Top eight, top twelve, something like that. Okay, so he goes top eight, top twelve, and then gets on a on a pro team. What about the other guys? What about the guys who got first, second, third, fourth, who, fifth, who, and sixth? Who, who, who do you who do you think Seattle should have picked up instead of Brezzy? Brother, no, 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 no. This is this this is my thing. I, just, I, I don't. don't I, I'm, 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 I, I don't. I don't think Brezzy's shit, and I'm gonna agree with Ace I'm not on this. He's I don't sh think he's shit. Yeah, I don't think yeah, he's shit. I don't I'm think just he's saying. Shit. I don't think he's shit. Right. They just didn't need. They just didn't need Brezzy. Thank you. That, that yes. Okay. Me and Trey That's are coming to a. We're they're, molding they're, they're it to a good I never. I, I've. I, when have you? When have you heard Brezzy is shit? Leave my lips. The pickup is shit because they don't need him. They need someone else. That's my point. Thank you, need, Trey. They need, they need I, I think. I think Brezzy. I think. I think Brezzy is a very good player. Brezzy. I think a good player. Je vous aime. French. They didn't. They, yeah, thank you. It means I love you. I wow. think. Um, they they did not need Brezzy. All right, they dropped their best player, and they didn't need Brezzy. They needed someone that was in NA challenges to match what Illy could do. That's my point. Done. I I just don't know. Like who? What, what, I I like what? Do you want like Geo to have gone to this team? Like I, I'm just confused. I think this team needed two changes. They were terrible. Yeah, no, okay, sure. yes, the two like, yeah, yeah, yeah. The two change thing change is something talked about. Yes. One change is not fixing the fundamental problem with the team, Inder or not. They were a good search team with a limited map pool, and once you figured out the veto strategy against them, it was fucking over because they weren't winning respawns on the other maps. And one change wasn't going to fix that. The team needed to make two changes and fundamentally change how they wanted to play to have a chance in fucking respawns. Just winning searches isn't going to be enough to be an elite team. Might as well go full French at this point. I, maybe I, that's what they're doing. They I showed you the there. stat. The full French does not work. Average placing 26. It's not, it's not worth it. I'm telling you. Bro, dude, full that's, full that's, Euro teams do cool. not work, right? Adding, a, this is it, bro. Wait, wait, wait. Let me, let me say something. Putting in another <laughs> Euro kid who's not, listen, who's not like a, like a Pred in Australia or a Hydra in Europe or a Linz in Europe, the out, most outstanding player that's cooking the shit out of everybody. Brezzi was not cooking the shit out of everybody. He placed top eight. Great. Excellent. Wow. Okay. <laughs> How many NA players are there that are either individually vets that would me mesh better with Alec, uh, Alec and Hook? There's a few other names you could think of that are vets that could probably mesh a little bit better and bring more an S and D if that's the mode they want to focus on. Then, goddamn Brezzy would. That's the point we're getting to. I don't care. The, the the L the L the laces in the chat and all that. The fact of the matter is, is that bringing Brezzy in, like Trey said, and I'm saying, is not what the team needed. And especially after losing your best player, you I think bringing in an NA vet would be a better trade off than bringing in Brezzy to replace the shoes he needs to fill. So, so but I you're doing the same thing that fucking Pat does. Name a player you wanted to come on this roster. Donnie Gunless. Gunless is Gunless has played with okay, Alec so, before. So so, okay, so so let's talk it through. We're, so we're you, you know they're already Brack. team of Kyler. We're, Okay, so we're bringing in Donnie and Kyler again. We're gonna run back this duo for the fifteenth time because it worked the other fourteen times. Fuck it. <laughs> and then and then Pearson, yes, Pearson, yeah. Kyler, because that also worked another time as well. Like, bro, come on, brother. Dude. But no, okay, no, 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 no. This I, is unfair I, assessment. Unfair assessment, right? You're talking about uh, then. This is a problem with the COD community in general. They're assessing people and characters from years ago, right? Do you think I'll make a rogue one? Is Illy the same the same person he was three years ago compared to now? Clearly not. So I don't want to hear the same bullshit when it comes to Donnie or when it comes to Pierce. You you may think you that there was not a neighbor before. No, yeah, okay, I, again, I, cheese, I, I, cheese, I, I, cheese, I, I, mozzarella provolone, bro. Like you you think Donnie as a person from when he first came in the league and the bad teammate narrative and all that is the same? You don't think he's learned something coming years forward? I yes, think but he's team with Kyler too many fucking times. Bro, I hate this circle of wagon shit. It's not going to work on this team if you were bringing Don, uh, Donnie in. And I love Pierce and I do uh, people always shit on Pierce's uh, places and challengers. I just think he's not a 
great networker in challengers and that's actually kind of holding him back in some Absolutely. of the situations and getting by teams. Absolutely. I actually well, I watch Pierce a lot. I actually think Pierce is pretty good this game. But I looking at the this team, I don't think this would be a terrible fit for, for Pierce. The best time of teams for Pierce to go to are like veteran heavy teams that are gonna kind of understand the way that he wants to play and like his mindset. This team would look would not be a great fit for Pierce. Brack I, think... I can understand though, but I would say that Brack is a better replacement for ASIM. Or rather for Alec than he is for Ender, to be honest, in my POV. Okay, that's a fair assessment. I, I, think, ahead, I, think let's, I think let's talk about this as a fact of not Brezzy was the right pickup, but the team sucked before Brezzy went there. And, <laughs> yeah. hit, and, and, Bre and Brezzy joined in, unfortunately, in a shit situation. They're still going to suck. Okay, yeah, you, yeah, actually, what you do at this, the end of the like, day, they are with like, losing Illy, right, they are gonna right. suck. I think we all agree that, right? Everyone can nod to that. Yes, we do agree that. I mean, even 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 with Illy, I think they still sucked. Illy was just their best player. You think they? I think they're middle of the pack. Suck is suck is a tough thing to say. There's a, there's a, there's about eight teams middle of the pack. They suck. Damn. Okay. They were overrated, I think, at the start of the game. Yes. They, sure. they, 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 listen, they used GA spots at the event to win some of the matches at the event. They were very good at S and D respawn. They sucked. The ah. team sucked. <laughs> are they Bro, I don't no see that, you I, I don't like this team, assessment like... I don't like this assessment because it's it's unfair it's an unfair assessment because you have teams like respectfully thieves Carolina gorillas yeah that suck more <laughs> yes exactly but we, what we're gonna say any yeah team, they still suck <laughs> any team that's not top four sucks is that the kind of is that the narrative we're running with here I don't I think, think, I, 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 I think every team I, I think every team below top four sucks a lot more than top four yes I don't think they're they top three. I wouldn't, I'm not putting New York in this conversation yet, bro. Yeah, they, they're, facts. They're not, True they're that not too. at the moment. Everybody's fighting. There are five teams maybe fighting for fourth at this point. And to there, be honest, there is five. there is three good teams. There, there is three good teams, and the rest are very, very below par right now. That's yeah. facts. Yeah, there, these these other teams are fighting for an ability to play phase optic Toronto first match on Sunday and be out of the tournament in 25 minutes. Like, I don't that care is, that. I, that's I, I don't right care. Now. I don't care that Minnesota got 3-2 near Ultra. They still are nowhere near going to be Ultra. It does not matter. Okay. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I, I don't know. But, yeah, I, I see I think if you, I, I, think, I, think, I think if they play that team 10 times over, they, uh, you know, this was their only time to win once, and they still didn't. 100%. I think Minnesota has made some good steps, and if we want to pivot to that, we can. Like, I, I think this team is on a on yeah. a good vein of form right now, and, and I yeah. just did a tier list recently, and I put them in the fifth spot, and I think that's a tip yeah. spot, but I'm not favoring them in a matchup against Toronto Optic or FaZe. I'm not picking them in that because, bro, you saw even then they battled that series. You know what happened fucking last map when all the marbles were on the line? The actual IQ points were not the fucking window, and that was a tough one to watch. Absolutely. It sucks for me, yeah. it sucks for me as a player to say it, too, because I've got friends everywhere. But I'm not here to be friendly. I don't really speak to anyone anymore. I'm I'm just letting it be known because if I sat here and said, "Yeah, they're 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 pretty fucking good," I'd be lying. I think Minnesota are probably the best of. I think I think Ultra uh, Minnesota are probably fifth behind New York if we're gonna go like that. I feel like they aren't bottom tier race. I think they will. I think Minnesota could be all of the bottom teams, hundred percent easy. I think Linz is one of the. I think well, Linz is a very good player in the league. I think he's you know rookie of the year in my opinion right now. Um, I still I, I you know like I agree with Ben. New York are. I, I don't feel like New York are the greatest they've ever ever been. We've seen that recently. I think Minnesota and New York would be an un unbelievable matchup. Uh, if you want me to be honest with you, I think that'd be a great matchup. I'd love to see that. And the only thing holding Minnesota back right now from being taking that fourth spot is wake yeah now uh, wait yeah is... we gotta have a conversation around wake right now because like i'll be straight up i want to give lamar the credit that he deserves because the last couple of years on seattle surge lamar has been dealing with pred and sib and those have been his talent it's been pred on the sub sib on the ar this year it's Linz on the sub and it's bloody lamar on the ar like, <laughs> turning up like he's actually being the slayer that they need and it's great to see him because these veteran guys the attaches the slashes the accuracies even the clasters they don't lose the gun skill and it's great to see that accuracy has been piecing but wake hasn't really been it and sure he only had like a 0.85 or something but wake just goes missing so many maps wake just disappears and you don't even notice that he exists like that map five search and destroy there's been a lot of quite important search and destroys this year where wake just vanishes off the face of the planet and 
there's questions to be asked about that because he was better on LAN, somewhat, but online he's been somewhat of a non-factor, and it's very confusing as to why, based on what we've seen over the last couple of years. But if I'm Rocco, it depends, and if I'm G2 as well, it depends how satisfied you are with where they presently are because you know top five, top four, top six. You know they made top four at the major. Are they happy with that, or do they want to be like Boston and they want to? You know, because Boston last year they got a top four, they made a change because they were like, we want to improve. It didn't work out, but that's their mindset as a team. I don't know what Rocker's mindset is. Are they happy with having a top four, top six, or do they want to actually try and win? Because if they do, they've got to, you know, they've got to have a look at this, right? Linz is playing great. I still have my questions about Vivid, but I mean, Labar is playing at such a phenomenal level that it feels criminal that this team shouldn't be doing better than they are in some respects. I know they took Toronto to game five, but I mean, when they got there. Listen, I don't want to, Craig, can I be sure? I, I think Rocker are playing solid right now, and I want to tip it. But let's be honest, bro. The only, like, team I think that is decent that they beat at the major was New York. And obviously, New York had an absolute fucking stinky. Uh, like, what, they beat LAG in a game five at the major? Like, tip it, but obviously against FaZe in Toronto, or sorry, Toronto in... Uh, uh, optic they were no match for the major and they you know crashed out fourth what is what brother okay let's talk about rocker here <laughs> like if you watch the toronto uh video that they released from the major uh do you know who toronto said was their hardest matchup but does anyone know no they say rocker so i want you guys to really assess if the best team in the game saying their hardest matchup of the major was this team that you're claiming ben is uh, a, a middle of the pack shit team it's crazy right that's a crazy assessment honestly you really think you really think rocker's a contender yes absolutely the the wake right. listen wait, wait, wait. the the wake issue is one thing where i do i'm not gonna be pretend like yeah he online he's been playing a little bit unlike himself in previous years where he was a walking 1.2 1.1 you know really like a, like a beamer on the map is it I don't think it's sound EQ. I think that's kind of stupid because in this game, you can you can still hear people if they're not using uh, covert sneakers. You can still hear them, first off. The other thing is the snaking. Um, you know, Wake did, if you watch previous games, he did snake often, so maybe the snaking is affecting him, potentially. But overall, you have to tip it. Not only Lamar proving the fact that he can be a slayer when he's not constricted to, to hill time and OBJ. Keep in mind, if previous games, Lamar was stuck in the hill for a record level amount of time. Record level, right? He's like, he can't, he, even if he wanted to be high, high impact slayer, you have Dante and AG running around the map, taking the kills anyways. So he's not in a place. Yeah, he's, also, he's also telling his, he's telling his team to play that way though too. This to be fair. No, I agree. No, listen, I'm not, dis I'm not, I'm not disagreeing with you. I'm saying simply, Lamar's always been able to shoot, but his teams positionally and, and how they're crafted were not in a place for him to be Slayer. This game, how it plays a big AR meta, it allows him to free up, not just be the only OBJ player and stuck in, the, stuck in that way, but to Slay. That's great. Wake, Wake is a Wake is also dropping 0.7 every series, so there's more kills on the map. Uh, uh, you know, add that in too. Linz, Linz is being ridiculous. I think Linz in S&D is definitely one of the most underrated players when you watch him, actually how well he plays the map in S&D. And Vivid has been playing high impact sub, great entry sub throughout the year. And Wake look, had highlights of greatness in the first two days of the major. The Sunday he fell off a bit, that's unfortunate. Obviously the time you need him the most to play well, but he was showing that he could still be a high impact player. Overall, the X factor is Wake for the team. Lamar is ridiculous right now. This is what you need. This is a central foundation that unlike the other bottom eight teams, if you want to call the whole other eight, nine teams in the league, the bottom eight, the bottom nine, they are definitely separated themselves and can take a map and take a series if they could close it out against Toronto, FaZe, or, or Optic. Bro, I'm going to put it to you this way. Wake is not, Wake's not a championship player. I'm, I'm done with waiting for this guy to come around. I'm done. I mean... Let's obviously play great amount for 2019 Florida, but whatever. A lot of people claim Sparkle is cheese, eat Sandy Q cheese, whatever. We can argue that one. And then the last couple of years, the two years on Florida, and then one on Boston, you know, just hasn't been that guy. He's just slaying, but he's not really playing for the win. And then this year, the slang's not there. And, you know, I, I thought the mistakes that he made, and, you know, Octane and Juma pointed out on the flank, like, 
uh, just just kind of tweaking and, and not really sure what to do in S&D. Some situations is, is tough to see because they're getting a great contribution from Lamar. Where you pointed out, Linz is a clear rookie of the year candidate and may be sort of at the top of that conversation. Reese has given them some good contribution. You're going to get what you get with, with Reese, but, you know, Reese has made finals in the CDL. He's definitely got the caliber player in them. I just think at the end of the day, yeah, they might be a top of the rest, but they ain't being the top teams awake. And if I'm Minnesota management right now, if they're not already thinking about our pivot strategy from wake after this major, they really should be. They shouldn't be kidding themselves. They shouldn't be living in denial. Like, like the next couple of weeks are huge for wake because I do think, unfortunately, if they have bigger aspirations, he's the next guy to go here. I was just going to add to it that, yeah, Toronto said that Minnesota were the hardest team for sure. Why? Because matchups are a thing in COD. That's how it is. You look back at World War II, and I'm not saying Minnesota are a bad team. I'm just saying they find it hard to match up against them, maybe because of the way they play. Now, you look at our team in World War II, um, Red Reserve, uh, Ben. FaZe couldn't beat us. They beat us one times out of nine. We beat them nine, like nine times out of ten. Yeah? Were we the best team in the game? No, we were very good, but we were never the best because we didn't win events. Would would Faye say we were the hardest team to play that year? I, I I guarantee if you ask Tommy who the hardest team to play that year, they'd have to say us because they could literally couldn't beat us every time they played us. Now I'm not saying that's not the case. Minnesota are a very good team. Yeah, it matchups existing COD and the fact that you know Wake isn't playing the best against the top teams as well. Imagine if Wake had a series like he does, you know, back in Modern Warfare 2, back then, then we then then we could be having the conversation. Wake team Wake just kept has... beating Optic on land for fucking two. Bro, we like that's a perfect example of matchup. Those mean teams other than the end of last year were like kind of mid, but th- somehow they played the fucking best Call of Duty all time against Optic, who had decent teams. I agree with you, bro. There are matchups. I don't I don't agree with that from that that point about um you're saying about like the Toronto thing. Like at the end of the day, like matches or a thing in COD. This, but I just don't know how you can sit here and look at this Rocker team and, and for serious, like, see that they have a high chance of replicating the top four thing. You Wait, you, you, you said, look for in me? place of... Uh, yeah, in to place you, of... Go ahead, re- re- finish your point, and then I'm going to... I'm gonna, well, I'm my gonna point address is Ben's we need point. some candidate players. Let's say we're going to drop week right now. Who do we look for? I know people have talked about Lunas. I see people in the chat talking about Beans. Obviously, Illy would be nice, but that ain't happening. Yeah, I think, I think that's... You just, uh, I was just saying, you just got to get an AR that fries. That's all you need right now. Because Lamar is their fryer, but how long can he keep it up for? Realistically. No, that's that the big the biggest issue, I don't know, is is more who to replace if you do switch swap out. There's no one available that's standing out. All the standout players in the challenger side are, are picked up pretty much, right? Anyone who really stood out. So that's I think the biggest roadblock if you were to even swap them out it wouldn't work out because there's no one to really pick up. That's that's the reality of it right now. There's no one There's no one in Challenge right now that's better than Awakening. That's the fact. That's, that's why the beauty of Challenger's Elite starts this week, bro. If I'm the Minnesota coaching staff, I better be watching all those Challenger's Elite games and be keeping note of what AR players who aren't going to be slow enough where we have a pace problem with Lamar and, and who we're picking up that can be a Friar AR because they can do that. This Minnesota team steps up a level. Then I'm believing. That's it's fair. just so hard to keep up consistency. Like, I'm not saying Lamar can't do it, but, you know, take me in IW, for example. I'd done it for two months and then fell off the face of the earth. You know, it it's, it, it don't happen every single weekend. I was, it happened, you know, you remember me, Zinni, back on Vanguard, for example. We were looking like top two, top three AR throughout the whole thing. And then boom, you could just, it, it, it just happens. Mm. Um, I have no doubt in my mind that everyone can keep it up, but, I mean, we're talking like we're talking like Wake hasn't been doing it for years. He has been, but on this game, he hasn't been. So either he needs to find his consistency back that he had previous years, or maybe the game's just not suited to him. But, what, yeah. One highlight I want to just give up to him as well was on that map, on the Rio map, he actually looked really good with the sub. I know that's kind of weird, but like he has, if you, uh, he had a, Lamar had a one point four two. Wake was right, right below him with a one point zero five. Right, he was a secondary, you know, shooter on his team. So oddly, he looked really good with the sub, which is, I think, a very surprising considering his play style of like a, his slow AR role. I think he needs to just kind of get out of his head with an AR and just start shooting the way he does with a sub. He's actually he was actually frying that map and was playing uh, legitimately a little bit better than some of the than his other subs, Vivid and Linz, on the Rio. So 
I kind of want to see like an MW19 when he had both the MP5 and the yeah. M4 in his hand. Like he would literally run around, pick up the gun off the floor, and would just switch between both of them, just running around front. And obviously that was a different time. It was all online. Yeah, different shit. game. Different nah, time. But, nah, but, nah, but, like... nah, but you, you, you're spitting facts though because he done a tweet at the start of this year saying people really think I can't run a sub or some shit like that. Mm. He he fact. is he's very he's very very talented, but we can only call out what we see. And so far, he's not been the wake that we've seen past three years. So if, imagine if he actually does start putting up these 1.1s, 1.2s that we see from him whilst actually playing good fundamental because everyone calls him a bait and kill whore for the past three years. Right. I think I think Lamar is the perfect person to get him out of that because like I've always said about Lamar, great teammate and the most professional person I've ever teamed with. I think if you can get him back to that level, maybe we don't even have this conversation. But the conversation is, he ain't playing that level. Do you replace him? Mm. You, you see how Major 2 goes. Yeah. If Major 2 goes terribly, and he, not terribly, but if Major 2 goes the same as Major 1 and he's not playing weight performance, that's the person you get rid of. That's the only person I can see on the chopping block as of such if we talk about the things like that. Then you look at Vivid, you know, Vivid is great, you know, running, 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 running. He is very good. He has like top accuracy in the league or something like that. He always does. He's a very good shooter. But so far, that team is the best of the bottom. And I'm not saying they're bottom teammates. I'm just saying, like, when you rank them out after of those the, below after the top, the top three, three, basically, you just yeah. say that's the bottom. I know. No, I'm not saying they're the bottom. No, because there's, there's, there's a lot more teams that we could talk about. <laughs> well, we will talk about. I, I, I do believe they are good, and clearly they did show bits of that against Toronto. I'm just saying they haven't got what it takes to beat Toronto, FaZe, and Optic just yet. That's my point. Fair point. I think play some more Rios and get Wake to... to get out of his head and you got a real real good shooters out there um but let's jump over to uh who, who we got left we got the i think we just do thieves i think you jumped over to I thieves think we've been going for like two and a half hours wait I, yeah I, what about, what about so vegas, probably... vegas and thieves vegas and thieves we can touch okay. on vegas as well i mean i don't know how much we have to really read into that because i mean look fair enough they put perch at the sub attached was flipping us off and i respect it they did beat gorillas in a bit of a dicey game four, their search looks questionable. So I'm not exactly sold yet that Vegas are, are cooking and Attach just had like a legacy series. So I need more evidence. And next week they play Miami and Toronto. So. Also, Assault had a fucking stinker. He's yeah, been up just... a lot of stinkers, man. I actually really like Assault, but bloody hell. What was it, a 0. 0.3 something, Ace, in, a, in the high-rise control? In the high-rise control, a 0. 0.38. Yeah. This yeah. uh, this LAG team, look, they did a really good job grinding early in Major 1, and they definitely reaped the benefits of it, of being like a really solid team for most of that stage. But now, as everybody's kind of on the same level because we're playing on a new patch, we got a new map in, it's going to be a little bit tricky for them to overcome what I think is a significant consistency and sometimes skill issue with this team. And unfortunately for LAG, I see this as kind of being a down stage for them. And on top of that, I don't know about their ability to make roster changes because if it were me, I think the clear thing is just keeping Eric Kimi Diamond Con and probably trying to get a faster AR player for Assault. Basically the same thing as Minnesota. You're trying to get an AR that can fry, then Eric can be your slow player, and then they're they're going to be very good at that point. Yeah, I agree. Because they're actually are getting Fame to step up, by the way, too, which I want to give mm -hmm. him his flowers. He was playing terrible at the beginning of Stage 1. And he's been good the last couple of weeks, at least from what I've seen. Absolutely. LAG just need that, I think, that final piece to complete them, and then we could see them as a more cohesive roster and not like every time you watch them and they lose one player is just having a ridiculous stinker every time it's like there's one player that's just not catching up whenever they lose it's never like oh we're all 0.7s or all 0.8s we all just had terrible series it's one guy that's really holding them back uh, in this case it's assault it's been fame before it's been assault and i think one series like estriel but diamond con's definitely been their their diamond in the rough ha 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 he 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 little cheese right there for everybody but lag uh definitely want to say that Purge on a sub does look a lot better. Uh, I mentioned this the last episode of Dope Check that we shouldn't necessarily jump on their backs immediately because they know their camp the best. So there was probably a glimmer or something they knew about Purge that his tendencies, and, and Dylan addressed it, or Attach addressed it in the post-game interview he had, that they noticed Purge looked like he wanted, like how he played on the map was more like a sub than it was an AR. So they put a sub in his hands and all of a sudden, He's not dropping 0.5s. He's dropping 0.93. 
over the series, which isn't that's that's you could work with a point nine three, right? You have Nero, who's a super aggressive sub. You have him head bashing. Then you have Purge being a little more calculated. I actually think this recipe they have with attached Nero, Purge, and Geo is going to be workable for Major Two, and you definitely need to see this experiment out. I think people should give them give this roster a chance because it looks like it it has potential for real. What do yeah. we think about Thieves? Yeah, let's jump over because the Thieves we, series. Yeah, let's uh, say Thieves and Optic. Uh, I'll just begin with this because I've defended Afro a lot, oh, but shit. man, watching this guy play sometimes is it's tough. tough. Yeah. It's tough to keep up the amount of gunfights that I'm like. Just hold the pre-aim, <laughs> and then it doesn't <laughs> happen. Criminal, criminal. Yeah. Like the evasion, even the Rio was was a tough watch. And I'm listening to their comms, and it was it was actually I was listening to your guys' watch party because I just got back from the and I was listening to other watch party. And I mean, you hit the nail on the head, Trey. Like I'm, I don't know what was going on in those comms, but that shit, I didn't think that shit was pretty. I mean, if you compare that to what was going on on better teams when they communicate. So frantic. I mean, I respect that they bring the energy, but bloody hell. Um, it's just a tough one for Thieves. I know that they were up against a, a very solid Optic team here, but I think I expected a bit more from their first series. I... Um, Go ahead, Trey. I was just going to jump in because I'm very critical about other people, and then when it comes down to people I deem friends, it's hard like I see more of a friend, it's hard to be as critical, but I don't want to be biased because that is just unfair of me. Um, I don't know what's going on with Afro. I really don't. He, when when I teamed with him, genuinely, I have no. Genuinely, I have every right in my mind to believe this guy was going to be the next superstar. I genuinely thought that. When I played with him on London, he was genuinely one of the greatest subs, raw gun skill I've ever teamed with. I don't know what's happened to him. You, th you Like you said, it was a solid Optic roster. You think Rio, you're thinking Afro Masterclass, even if it's against Optic. And it just wasn't. And it wasn't, a, it, it wasn't like a... It's been like this for a while, too. It's not just the first roster... Yeah. Or where he where he was good or anything like that. It was, you know, it's unfair because it is new roster against a good optic. But it's like Ace said, the the comms are frantic, and I see people saying that Rio comms are frantic. We watched Ultra. Not to that level. We, yeah, we we watched exactly. Ultra. We watched Ultra come on that map, and it sounded like they were playing Afghan. It was so <laughs> calm. It was so calm and so good. Um, ah. I, I just don't I want a like, Dylan Cod 2.0, bro. The, the I don't want like, another superstar yeah. UK SMG talent who turns up for one year and is talked about as like being the next top player and then they fucking fall off within a certain amount of time and it's frustrating. You know? the, per the person that's letting this team down the most is Afro. Uh, yeah. That's... Yeah. That, 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 that's, uh, that's bottom line. I thought... I thought they'd like... I, I got a feel for the coaching staff on the Steve team because, like, I it almost feels to me watching him play that, like, all of what they put in practice just goes out the window the minute the map loads in. And I, Sam was kind of trying to make this point yesterday on the flank. It's like these guys are just kind of shitting bricks when the map loads. And it's just, it, it is, if you're a coaching staff, that that becomes less of a, like, practice problem, more of a sports psychology problem. And it is very difficult uh to solve i i liked the roster moves but man like did i mean the map two, the amount of like go go click map two real quick how many first bloods did thieves have in the, the second map here first blood thieves had five i mean one three rounds these had then, yeah these had five yeah. and optic had four so they actually had more first so, bloods yeah so they, they tossed away a couple of rounds and and six three it becomes you know five four anyway my my point is that uh you know they missed opportunities on the S and D when they bombed down and they played terrible spots maybe a lack of communication there on how to check bomb and shit like that and the the, the invasion control was gift wrap for them at the end bro because yeah. you all we've all played invasion control offense is very hard around five control you start to get that spawn that team other team spawning deep where they're not watching the cross and you can get in the hill and from there plays are made and they let AG big like win like three individual one v ones. In the hill to prevent them from getting in there, getting time, watching the crosses, and probably winning that round. It was gift wrap for them to go to a fourth map here 
and they could not take advantage of it. It, it is maddening, bro. I, I, this is a tough debut for this new squad, and uh, they have an incredibly difficult stage. Their remaining games to split are Miami, Minnesota, who we just praised, FaZe, who we know are good, Vegas, who won this weekend, LAG, okay, that's a winnable game, and then Toronto. Like, this team is... Damn. This is this is one that, like, they needed to try and show some kind of building block so they can have some confidence going into the next two before phase, and, and there's not really a lot to take out. Just go ahead, Trey. They are also 1-12 in hard point. I thought they were 1-13 now. 1-13. Sorry, yeah, sorry. I'm, I, I'm I, sorry, fucking I, believable, bro. Like, I'm not being funny, but they are... And I said this today in my stream. They are the worst team in the league right now. And to me, I don't believe it's close. Because 1 and 13 in hard point is absolutely unacceptable. Not even, you'd say it's unacceptable for Paris. We're talking LA Thieves right now. Yeah, I mean, this is also a new roster, to be fair, but even then, they got blown out on that point. No, so, I, yeah. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to talk about Afro. Afro. Afro's name should be Afro. Afri, Afri, Afrocito because he sounds he looks like he's playing Spanish card. He just be running at shit and just headbanging, bro. On God, Afrocito needs to get his shit together <laughs> and hold a pregame. It's really that simple. He's playing his coaches are the one of the greatest COD players we've ever seen, J Cap, right? If the one thing you're gonna tell him is just slow your game down a little bit, bro. You ain't gotta throw your life away. Um, the crafting of this roster is obviously odd this year because previous years we've seen superstars on the LAT uh, uh, team, roster, camp, however you want to phrase it. This year we're seeing them obviously reset and kind of redo their entire roster. Ghosty is, is the center of your organization for now. I think you should build around Ghosty for sure. Um, yeah, Cami and Afro at this time are both, both have the same problem as was addressed a little bit earlier. They're both players that for a year or two looked like the next thing. That, and the entire community agreed they were the best players coming up. And then since then have not been able to find the consistency that they had previous years. We saw it on Rocker last year with them. And we're seeing it again for both of them this year. That duo needs to split up ASAP Rocky. And I think them continuing it this year was the wrong decision for Thieves and for their individual careers. Like doing, duoing up together. Um, Kremp didn't yeah. look good. Kremp didn't look good this series overall. He started off slow. Yes, he's new. Of course, it could be jitters. You know, however you want to phrase that. I will give a bit of credit to Nasty. Nasty showed spotlight of of moments of greatness. He showed himself uh, able to keep up. I'm excited to see him and Ghosty kind of bounce off of each other and develop over these next couple of weeks. Uh, they did have Optic as their first you know, first match together. So you have to keep that in mind that it's not a good assessment of where they can be and how well the new roster can perform. I think we give them until about week three before we jump on here and really hit them hard with critique. Let them play some middle pack teams. Maybe, a, you know, uh, they do have a hard split, but let them play some of these. Let, let them play Legion and let's see what they are really like after a few weeks developing and getting to know each other a little more. The last thing I'm going to say, hot take, Joe deceives for Afro if he doesn't perform next week. Yeah, I, I could see I could see them trying Joe back in the squad. Uh, but yeah, the, listen, this is always listen, regardless of how they played in this 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 match, uh, I didn't see them really beating Optic. Of course. So not, yeah. this was kind of a like an no. assumed result anyway. Obviously, they should have been more competitive in this result. Mm, listen, Miami and Rocker are opportunities for them. I don't maybe maybe Miami more so than Rocker to get in. If you somehow get through those three. You're one and two. You you got Vegas and LAG facing Toronto. You're gonna be you can get three wins here if you play right, and then you manage the schedule. Maybe you didn't look great against the top teams, but they made it to winners and kick it on from there. They, this was just a tough showing off the rip for them, I, and disappointing because uh, they did the opposite of all the things they should do in many of these situationals across the three maps. Absolutely. I guess it depends to some extent on how good the Optic team was they played. I think we'd better touch on them quickly just because this is the type of performance that will make Optic fans pretty confident about their potential looking higher up the league. I think especially from a map pool perspective, right? Rio just suits them so well on paper. Like, this is a map that Pred and Shotzi should be the best SMG duo in the game on this map. 
They obviously love it. Preds talked about it. The teams talked about it. They slammed Thieves on it. Of course, a rather questionable Thieves. But Toronto have looked somewhat questionable on this map as well. So I think the game has changed somewhat. The meta has changed somewhat. But the map pool that is now in the game is more favorable for Optic than it was previously. And Optic have got to think that when they play Toronto, I think at the end of the stage, if they can get them on a Rio, they've got to be confident in that. The Rio skill gap amongst the top teams is going to be who on hills like P2, P4 that are kind of like on edge lanes, but have three different paths. Teams getting a better feel when you have the back spawn or you have, you go have a spawn side, understanding that middle pinch timing. Because what I could see happening with a team like Optic is teams get very good at feeling the timings. And then that exposes a player like Shotzi that's pinching around middle because his three teammates have died and you know where the last guy is. And that's going to be the gap between Toronto Phase and Optic, who I think are going to score up on this map throughout Major uh, major 2 because it just seems like they're all going to want to be good at it to be on top of the pile. But yeah, if you're an Optic fan, like I'll give you another example. This Karachi s and I thought they executed to a T. Their retakes were great. They were playing their priorities right. They were playing how to play around Bond to be able to defuse it when they were on defense. They did a good job when they got picks to close out rounds. Like, these were all the issues that Optic had in Major 1 when they, say, played phase three times and lost. Like, the s and woes, s and situationals, they were very clean on this map. So if you're an Optic fan, you got to feel very happy about this weekend to kick on with, with this kind of level of execution. They are going to be a contender on Sunday. You might see them that grand final one one additional point about their their gameplay on rio the map is made for them absolutely shotzi and pred are shotzi shotzi on rio is i feel like this is he's going to be his best map uh not only because it's a sub map but he doesn't have to do fancy things he's just going to be the shotzi that we know and love and just gun you absolutely gun you out of out of wherever you are on the map to be honest additionally they're the only team that i saw this weekend correct me if i'm wrong ben rab trey somebody that played this played Rio on a two-two, right? They played um, two ARs, two subs. Every other team we saw play it with three subs, one AR. You're so saying like, Optic was using two and two? Yes, Optic da uh, Dashi and Kenny both had ARs out, and then the uh, AG and uh, Shotzi were both wearing using subs. So I found that to be really interesting that they they went with a two-two instead of a three-one on Rio, which in my mind was kind of weird. So I would think that maybe I was really excited to see Kenny use a sub. But instead, we saw him with an AR, and we saw Dashi with an AR. So it's kind of interesting that they've decided to play it out this way. So maybe we see the real meta change uh, to a 2-2 because all of a sudden, uh, they come out with something different than the, every other team that's played Rio this weekend so far. I would say we got to be careful because the top team's got to play the top team's on the map. I'm going to be honest, the, the issue in trade, I don't know if you agree with me watching these play on Rio. Like, they were not ready for any of the aggression by Optic. The amount of times I, could, I saw these players getting caught sprinting, or not expecting an optic player to shimmy and then wide child them. Like I probably saw that 10, 15 times that map. So I just think optic outclass thieves on the town on that map. I want to see optic play a better, more real suited team than I think the Steve's team is. I don't know if you agree with me, Trey. Uh, I think we can say that about a lot of teams really Ben. Um, I, it comes back to that thing where I'm saying you can only beat who's in front of you and yeah. You know, if Optic didn't play Phase or Ultra for a whole split, you know, would we say Optic and they went five and zero oh or seven and zero, oh, whatever our matches are? Would we say they're, you know, would we say they're the top team? Um, because they beat, you know, how we say like, oh, they didn't beat anyone good. They just beat, you know, they beat the bottom teams. Does that make them good? They just looked good against a bad team, but they looked very good. They didn't look, there was nothing shaky about it. It was dominant. I think that's what we can say, which then leads us to say that Thieves didn't look good at all. Yeah. Um, and you see, you, you've seen it pass. You, let's take Minnesota, for example. You know, they're not deemed a top three team, but they done well against Ultra. There's no sugarcoat in it. In my opinion, they should have won the second map. Um, Linz trolled a 2v2 situation at me and Ace were watching. Mm -hmm. Um, you know that that series was very winnable for uh for Minnesota, and that's why I'll give them credit. But that is why Ultra are better because they clutched up. That Minnesota didn't have the clutch factor that Ultra have, and they don't have that yet. The same way for Thieves and Optic, Optic have that clutch factor. They're showing it against you know a lesser team against them, and they looked like they weren't gonna lose it at all. Like that series was dominant. Everyone gassing up Shotzi about the map. Yeah, it's a sub map. You expect Shotzi to do that. Shotzi and Pred, like like Rab said, 
that they should be on par with Abizi and Simp and you know Envoy and and Kleenex on that map. And I think the best thing you can take from that is Dashy loves COD too. You know, we can talk about all these players about Shotzi and that. Dashy yeah. literally won the Dashy literally won the game, hopped straight up into the other room, put the stream on. Passion. You know, we got passion, Dashi, baby. We've got Dashy back that loves COD. We've got Dashy back that loves COD. I went in this chat straight away. He was he looked happy, he was vibing. Um and you know how everyone's like an optic fan or whatever like that. I'm I'm I wouldn't say I'm green wool, but I'm happy to see you know, the passion back, it's four young guys or youngish people. There's no scump there. There's no crim. There's no, nothing like that. It's four people, four young people with some passion back. And they showed it against that. They showed it against uh, Thieves, you know, Pred won against a team that was, you know, a, a poor team, their bottom of the CDL. And he stood up and roared and screamed like it was like it was phase. It's nice to see the passion. Bro, I'm going to, I haven't said this take yet, but. Obviously, this is contingent on optic, like being very good this year, making making noise at champs. But honestly, the best thing that could have happened to this team is what major one happened, where they ended up getting like a decent top four blazing, but they were clearly not in the level. The other two really good quality, or they got top three rather, of the two other good quality teams, and it gave them a chip on his shoulder to to grind for, which is like for all of the respawn, for all of this, for all the shotsy that, Fred this, Dashy that, whatever. Like Kenny playing good. They were not a good search team and they had to work on it because it was their biggest limiter. Like the team is making really good strides. And I think as an optic fan, you should be very happy that the team is putting in the work. Obviously at the end of the day, they got to get it done in an event. And more importantly this year, because we haven't seen it from an optic team in God knows how long actually be a contender and make it to a champs grand final. Add on to Dashy himself. I spoke on this early on when everyone was hopping on his Schmeet. Dashi is one of the best players in this game. It's an AR meta game. It's created for him. And he's just adapting to a new role with Hill Time and playing OBJ. But I'm telling you, this stage, I said it, and I'll claim it again. Dashi is out for heads right now. 1.25 in his first series back, cooking these little gremlins known as LAT. Nah, Dashi is one of the best overall players in the game. He's been doing it all. I don't care if he's dropping small, little little maps here, 0.9s, 1.0s, and he's not the dash. He's dropping 1.6s, but losing. I'd rather see him cooking, getting hill time, playing OBJ, and playing the right way, and winning series, and winning maps. 1.25 dash, he is here. And again, map one, what did he drop? He had a, a, a 1.33 with, with two minutes of hill time. God bless. Dash, he is here. The dash you, you want, you actually, the optic fans that you want to see, this optic, this optic dashy is here and he's here to stay. And I'm really excited for him to keep playing the way he is right now. And I think it continues all of stage two. So I, I, I kind of that, agree, but I'm like, what yeah. is this take? Dashy's good at cards, mind blown. You know I mean? No, 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 no. no but I'm just, he was being I'm just happy recently. he's got why, the passion. Why, why, why are we acting like he wasn't being cooked like the last couple weeks? He was getting, he was getting, yeah, he's been getting fried fuck? for a year. Yeah. He, he's, been get, he's been getting fried for years. Brother, to me... To to me, Brandon obviously you don't compare the two, but you know how everyone roasts Lamar for being, you know, the, every, everyone roasts Lamar for being a hill. The kid. same way, the same way that everyone roasts Dashy. Now Dashy's back, bopping heads, and he's got the passion back. That's, he's gonna get roasted that, until he wins it. He's gonna get roasted when they lose, and he's gonna get praised when they win. The life of a main AR. Enjoy it, Dashy. It's a fucking uh, enjoy it, Dashy. It's a fucking <laughs> pleasure. <All> right. <laughs> right. Absolutely. Uh, I think that covers all the teams that we wanted to talk about. The last thing I wanted to do with the boys here and with Ben, our special guest, it, I know he did this earlier, but let's do a quick CDL tier list of the current after week Bro, one. I need to go to bed, buddy. Brother, a CDL tier You Also, your your mic just went to negative 100 right now. I don't know what just yeah, happened to your mic. I don't know what happened to your mic. It went crazy. It keeps doing the same shit again. It's, it's, I don't know why it keeps going down. Like you, you be dragging that thing down. Oh my! Uh, oh, technical difficulties. I want to go to bed. I know what's <laughs> happening here, man. I know the cheese. All right, but I, I will off. say, I, I will say, we have something cool after the tier list too. Nice bit of juicy intel dropped on us just recently. So after the tier list, look we'll at look, look at ben, Ben's intel. eyes. Ben's eyes just lit up. I saw. You oh, said intel. He said. This is a tier. Whoa, whoa, whoa! You said tier list here. It's got the wrong fucking logos on this one. Where's the? Is the current one? Is there another, a new one? Yes, yes, Rose has got it. Rose, drop it in chat. R Rose, yeah, throw it to me, man. Use my tier list. My bad, gangster. You didn't throw it. Throw it in here, or send it but to, to me. everyone. To everyone in this call right now, and everyone in the chat that stuck with us for a few hours. 
we've got some juicy intel just dropped on us and uh <laughs> on the phone you know <laughs> businessmen over here you know how we roll um we get it all first exclusives um and you'll have to you'll have to stay tuned and look at our look at our terrible takes on this tier list before you get to hear that so. bro it's our tier list is going to be perfect okay wait oh, so, shit, what a tease. here we go we're ready and we have intel coming up let's make a tier list real quick so rather can go to bed and we can drop some great intel for you guys listen all right s tier obviously i think we all agree toronto ultra yeah yeah pretty pretty agreeable i'm just gonna say something if i disagree Okay, all right. A tier, A tier, <laughs> I'm going Atlanta phase. And I'm actually going to throw Optic in there. Is yeah, it, otherwise you're adding more tiers, but that's not the, I, I can fly with that. Yeah. I, I don't care. You, you, you know yeah. my take on it. I don't care, but they are below phase in the A tier. Yeah, yeah there, there's, a, there's a gap, but it's fine. There's, you're not going to add 17 fucking letters. So yeah, I'm not going to add an A minus tier. Like the fuck? <laughs> like, <laughs> that's too much work. Okay. S, A, B tier. I'm throwing New York and okay. then and then Rocker. Agreed. Fair? Yeah. Down for that. Yeah. yeah 100%. Wait, Ra Rav's up. You're, you're, Rav, you're, what the you're, fuck you're you talking. got to say, bud? No, I'm I'm chilling actually. I, I think I agree so far. You you had your pimp pimp slap up and ready to go. You tell me what's about to happen right now. What, what what's your issue, man? No, I had no issue. I I think this is correct. I'm just analyzing, you know me. The only other I said, I, the, I, Go ahead. Yeah. I was gonna say I think we all had this rocker issue. Everyone else is worse than all of them. Yeah, my point. My point is I think Rab was gonna say certain about rocker if I'm not mistaken, Rab. But I feel like we covered them pretty fucking well in this episode. That they're actually pretty fucking good. They just need Wake to start fucking doing something. Yep. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. C tier. I think we have to throw heretics. And then Boston. Uh, would I put anyone else there? I I want to see one more weekend for Vegas. If they play well one more weekend, I'd like to move them up. But I feel pretty confident both those teams are in C. Okay, that's fair. I think I think Miami but Vegas like edge, you know. But 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 Miami first or Boston first in C? I think that's like the I critical. Miami. Want to put Vegas there, bro. I, you put Vegas Wait, you, there now? you want Vegas I, I in C? Hate it. I Your mean, mic bro, is gone, bro. Your mic is literally evaporating. I don't understand it. It's like a weird you, way. Okay, you're back. Thing. You're back. You're back. It, went, it literally went to negative. And if then... I hold it, if I hold it on the... In... It's fucking up again. What the hell is going on? It's on my end. It's all good. Uh, what was you going to say about Vegas? What's your, what's your argument why they should be in the C tier? I mean, I think they're better than... I don't know. I don't have a good argument. And my mic's fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> okay uh, let, let, let's uh do Trey we'll do, we'll, I think we should put Vegas in D right do you agree Trey we'll do, we'll, we'll do Rab facial expressions and then that's what yeah, we're gonna yeah, do th th Rab, um, Rab smile thumbs up or Rab smile thumbs down that's it or, or I, I, bad face I, I, th down. I, I think one more good weekend out of Vegas or a good weekend out of Vegas yeah then we can then we can put them there but as of right now top of D they beat L they beat LAG. I mean, let's not gas it up. They beat LAG. Yep. Okay, so here's the order for D tier. There's no F tier, although there should be, and I would put some of these teams in F tier, but let's just put them in order in D to F, basically. I would put Vegas first. I okay. would put Seattle after, although I don't know with this roster, it could be lower. No, we disagree. The ranking of these next it. four teams is impossible, so just fucking try it. That's what I'm trying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Per, 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 they personally, all, they're all, they're all LAG or Ravens? Yeah. I was going to put Ravens, LAG, Seattle, LA Thieves. I don't think the ranking of this really matters, to be honest. No, it, it doesn't, but I, but like, I don't think <laughs> none of them are good. Oh. <laughs> That's the problem. We don't know. Like, this is okay. This is the problem with the unbalanced fucking schedule is like some is also driven by schedule bias. So like, all right, just I whack Vegas, them all in there, bro. Right? Okay. Okay. Just make sure, just, thinking, just yeah. make sure LA okay. Thieves are at the Let's bottom. Let's look at it done. this way. Is my mic like? Yeah, you're back. You're back. You're back. Yeah, you're back. Okay. A uh, question for you guys. There's five teams here. Probably four of those five teams won't make champs. Do we think? Or is that not about? No, that, that's that's yeah. that's fully fair. Yeah. But that feels about right. So which is the team of these five? I know they have, but like, which of these five is the most likely to make champs? Because I'm not really sure what my answer. Let me look at this there. goddamn schedule. Can I, say, can, I, can I say none of them? Like, because <laughs> nah. it's gonna. 
Uh, uh, you got to throw, you got to you got to throw, you got to throw your, you got to throw your take out there, bro. It's got to be one of them. Mm. It's got to be one of them, literally. So if, if, if so, if Inter doesn't come back, it can't be Seattle because I just don't see the path there right now. Carolina's got a skill issue. LG's got a skill issue. It's either Vegas or Thieves, but obviously I'm tired of winning. How the, the fuck we? How the fuck we have oh, Thieves in the top two? What? These motherfuckers can't win a goddamn thing, and you have them at, saying, at, at like, the top I of the just, list. Well, who the fuck am I supposed to pick? Anyone You're else? In Seattle. They, they just they right. So so so, 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 like, so, so let, let, let let me ask you guys something. All right. So LAG are currently eighth in the standings. Okay. Let's not use that as a as a as a you know as yeah. a statue point. But if they get rid of assault, bring in someone better than assault, if they can. I don't know how it works over there because obviously. They ain't fucking yeah. got anyone working over there. <laughs> do we think LAG make it? Because I do. I think Diamond Con is. A, I think Diamond Con is very, very good, and I think if they pick up an AR that can actually fucking do something, I think that LAG team is better than the bottom four. Bro, if Illy doesn't come back, bro, my I think I'm gonna yeah. My balls hurt from Ben's take on this right now. They, it's just so, that was the craziest thing I've ever heard in my life. Paris and LAT, we somehow jumped LAT to be in the top two of the bottom. Like, bro, what are we talking about bro, here? Bro, because this order, this order with these teams shifts every weekend because the schedule's unbalanced and we don't know how to feel about fucking Vegas beating LAG because tomorrow fucking Vegas is going to suck and maybe LAG wins one. I, I don't know with these teams. Obviously, LAG's got a, like a points differential right now. Um, but we really got to see what happens after this major with these rosters and if anyone gets consistent because none of these five fucking teams have been consistent at all this year. Fair, fair. I, I want to go back to Trey's, Trey's thought too if LAG do replace Assault uh, and pick up someone like, you know, maybe a Brack, a Tempus, I don't know who. They could be a contender then. It's The season's not chalked. It's they, they, there's, we're early they, enough to where if you do swap someone in, you have a chance to actually make it out of that bottom. For real. They're, like I said, looking at the standings, they're currently eighth. They got 50 points. Fucking impressive, if you ask me. Um, and I truly believe, I'm not saying Assault needs to go or they're holding, they're holding them back because they've, they've done well with them. They've looked okay. But, you know, I'm looking at 9 and 34 or whatever it was on a goddamn AR map. And I'm thinking, I can't be doing that. You got to get, you, you got to start looking. And that's the first place I would look. Um, I, 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 I love LA Thieves, I do, because they're my boys, but like we got to see something from the rest of this weekend, or that might actually be fucking chalked. They yeah. need to get some wins this they need to get some wins in these next few games, or it's chalked. Like unless they win an event. If they win it yeah. oh my god. No, no, I'm saying unless they win it like un, like it's chalked unless, it, unless yeah, they win yeah. an event. Oh, yeah. okay, 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 okay. I'm not um, saying I'm not I haven't got them, I haven't got them winning an event, believe me. Well, again, this is well, this is the uh Dope check episode eight. Dope check at least the dope check CDL tier list for stage two right now. I think this is a, the bottom. The D one is where we have the most contention. I think everywhere else we're pretty aligned on. Uh, uh, ben, was your did yours look like this in the end too? Similar to this? Pretty close, and it's kind of crazy because Miami and New York are fucking dead last last event. But I guess this is how it is. Like, I don't, dude, I, it, it really is a league where there's like three really good teams. A couple of teams a, a, a week are like maybe fourth, but no one's been able to lock down that spot. We're waiting for New York to come around, and then it's just an absolute like pile of teams behind that. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, I think that's about it. We want. Is it time for the intel drop, Trey? You want to drop it? Who wants to drop yes. it right now, man? Yes. Uh, I can drop it, or Rab want to drop it. I don't mind. Rab, it, Rab, it, Rab can treat it like yeah, a you. I don't know. Rab's Rab's mic doesn't work right now, so it has to be one yeah, of you or me, man. All right. So earlier when we were speaking about um expansion and stuff like that um you know thinking about teams that wanted to get into the league and everything like that uh i have been told via a source via a source whatever you want to call it uh that tsm have been doing their due diligence uh on entering the scene entering the space on trying to buy a franchise um with what money he seems like broke Wait. Uh, Wait, how? Don't ask questions. This is just a source I have been. Um, uh, someone, someone, so, so, listen, that's just what I've been told. Um, they did, they did mention yeah. it uh, on on a Reddit post as well that they were looking to get into uh, different esports and including the Call of Duty competitive scene. So, 
I heard this rumor for years. I'm talking three years yeah. ago. I heard TSM was this, but that's when they had money. <laughs> I mean, yeah, like um, they, they, they listen. TSM signed a landmark deal with FTX, and I don't know if y'all been following the news the last couple of years. Turns out FTX was not what they said where they were. And and beyond all of the like financial issues the last couple of years, like that one in particular was a like not I think what was a nine figure deal. It was a lot of money. And, that, um, uh, just yeah. touching on it. Just touching on it. Two hundred and ten million dollar deal that suddenly disappeared overnight. So I don't know where they get this money. Go ahead. TSM have I'm pretty sure like six people working for him now, <laughs> but I th <laughs> I think it is pretty bad uh, in terms of that. But I do believe they are trying to get back into a lot of the esports uh, with top teams too. Um, like I said, that was a source that you know that got told to meet Ace and Rab uh, just before the show or whilst the show was going on. And we got confirmation that we could, you know, talk about it and stuff like that. But I don't even think it's a fact of, you know, how how can they afford it or stuff like that. I think it's more of the fact that teams are actually trying to get involved. Yeah. And that doesn't mean, you know, that COD's dying or something's dying or the scene's dead or something like that. People got to look at the positives of it and think, teams still want to get into Call of Duty no matter what the situation is right now. I, I feel... Imagine how it would work because, like, you're not going to get four teams to do expansions. Like, if they want to come in, they're going to buy LAG? No. Because why would you do that? They'd just wait until it's an open system. It, this, to me, is is a classic case of, like, you know, TSM has had significant cutbacks in the last 12 to 18 months. And to your point, I trim their staff. They've gotten out of a lot of games cut back on a lot of content creators their, their money in money out situation is not great and they might be looking to merge and acquire someone or be acquired by someone and this is problem that we're you know trying to still expand our business back up to what it was and hopefully someone's out there to give us the financial support because if i were activision and i'm taking a prelim meeting with these guys like knowing about the ftx stuff i'm i'm trying to do due diligence to understand how they can afford to do this Are they trying to leverage this news to try and get a raise uh, like a like a raise from VC firms or other other sources. I don't know, bro. It's it, the, you're right about the interest is a key thing, and and I spoke to that earlier in the show. Um, but yeah, I don't I don't see them getting in anytime soon. That's perfectly fine. Like I said, that's just like one of those things, and that could be more orgs, more you know. I mean TSM, you know they've had some before that shit that happened. Ben, they were very you know they were a very reputable org, um, and. I think you had Prime TSN try and get into COD, uh, you know, when the CDL was blowing up or starting off, it would have been great. Like you said, I don't know about the money situation over there, but they have spoke a lot about, you know, um, getting into getting into more esports again. So, you know, the money situation can't be terrible over there if they're talking about that. Um, maybe have, they've got some more investors or something like that. I, I have the... I is There's that, clearly either a merger coming down the line here that they're being bought out by somebody and keeping the brand uh, or there's a race coming in because I just don't see how they can afford to, you know, to make some of these moves. And last time they were in COD, bro, the roster they 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 got was not exactly the best roster, so hopefully they do a better job this time around. Well, Pac-Man, <laughs> Wheats, Ivy, Burn. Cold Chan was, Cold Chan was Cold on that Chan. team. Yeah, well, I mean that yeah. you got you got it. That was a lot of years ago. What is that? Six years ago now. It's almost seven years ago yeah. now. Well, they insta got out though. Like after that, like a three year, they were done. Yeah, but uh, you know, I did bring up the uh, graphic that we have from you know when they talked about it on Reddit. Basically, they were saying uh, they mentioned Call of Duty twice. Like they kind of like doubled down on COD and Valorant. So I think you know tier, we want to participate. We're actively looking to participate in multiple tier one esports, including League of Legends, Valorant, and Call of Duty. And at the bottom, you have Call of Duty has a really dedicated community, and it's something we would really love to be a part of. So they they definitely are doubling down on these three esports as ones that they want to get into. And then obviously the intel now is that they're doing some due diligence on top of that. So. I mean, it's really big news for the CDL. It's really big news if you're a Call of Duty fan. The scene isn't going anywhere. Whether this lawsuit, ha you know, goes how deep it goes or not, the CDL, I think, in the Call of Duty space that we love, the competitive scene, is going to continue for years to come. Bigger organizations are going to come in. Smaller guys may be starting to get pushed out. Um, it's kind of it's 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 you know we got to take the positives, as Trey said. It's it's definitely a good thing to see that TSM is interested in getting back into Call of Duty, especially. Um, where there's some uncertainty that exists now about the league. So, uh, uh, this is more real. The League of Legends thing has been widely reported with TSM that they were trying to, you know, because they got out of NA, 
they were trying to get into uh, uh, the Asian region, specifically the Korean region, into League of Legends. So if that happens, then I'll be more... Because it's like, it's like even if they don't have unlimited funds, it's going to be very difficult for them to field a, a real quality competitive Call of Duty team without hiring staff to be able to scout the right people. Like, I'm skeptical, but at least people are circling the scene, which is always a dub to your point. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think, I think, I mean, we've been going, we've been going on for about three hours. I want to, you know, I want to, let me jump to the main screen here. Let's jump to the main screen. Let's let it load up really quick. But Ben, thank you for joining us. Thank you for coming on. Uh, we no appreciate you. We appreciate what you do for the Call of Duty scene. Uh, you know, always, always giving us some great takes and some great content all around. Rab and Trey, you guys are always as, as handsome as possible. Rab, fix your mic. I want to say that as well. But guys, dope check episode eight. Thank you guys for tuning in. Thank you to all the co-hosts for coming here. One of, I think our, our longest episode, there was so much to talk about week one, a lot of you know, hot takes and big opinions all the way. A lot of yapping. A lot of yapping going on. A great amount of Japanese between me and Ben happening today. Uh, gotta love it. We appreciate you guys for watching. Next week, we'll be back Monday, 4 p.m. Eastern time for Dope Check Episode 9. More storylines, more narratives, more intel, and maybe another special guest. Who knows? We appreciate you guys for watching. Have a good rest of your week. And Watch Party will be live this weekend for the Call of Duty matches with me, Rab and Trey, maybe another special guest. Thank you guys so much for watching. We'll catch you guys later. Peace.